Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto was the strongest dragon warrior in Dragon Ball. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by KFBANIME87 and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Unknown Planet, Universe 7. The Demon Queen, with her brother Deborah being king, Toa stared at a computer screen in her private base of operations. Unknown to all forms of life as this planet was home to her and her alone. A barren planet devoid of life and only featuring her hidden base. Those time patrol pests have ruined my plans for the last time. She growled angrily. Time after time after time she had been foiled by those meddlesome insects. All she wanted was to collect energy through distorting history so she could revive the demon realm and have her race rule the galaxy with her as their true leader. And every single time, the supreme Kai of time, her pathetic lackey trunks, even the perverted elder Kai had interfered and thwarted her again and again. As she looked over possible universes and timelines to manipulate something caught her eye. Demon energy? She said in interest before she took a closer look. No. Similar to it yet not as chaotic. Something more animalistic instead. What is this? She asked herself as she examined the energy closer. The screen of her computer suddenly shifted to show a figure. A young male wearing bright orange that was also a ninja. A ninja with a demon fox sealed inside him she muttered to himself. As Toa looked over this young man's history she learned a lot about him including his name, Naruto Uzumaki, she smirked wickedly. She saw how he affected those around him and smirked as a plan formed in her mind. It may have some butterfly effects on the timeline, but this will work very well all I have to do is fuse him with his demon and drop him off on a planet that can give him the chance to learn of Kai. And the best part is that lowly bitch won't be able to interfere with this, once the fusion is complete, she cackled as she knew she would get one over on the supreme Kai of time this way. She continued to cackle as she held up her staff and made it glow dark purple. Planet Namek Age 761. On the planet Namek it was pretty peaceful. Green sky, blue grass. Such majesty and beauty was on display. On a deserted island a reddish-orange flash of light appeared and dropped Naruto onto the ground unconscious. Mere seconds later Toa materialized in a flash as she gazed at the unconscious and nude ninja. Haha. <laughs> Don't fail me. If you do well I may make you my pet she said before pointing her staff at him and materializing some clothes onto his body, which was an orange-red kimono dot. Hope you enjoy the sword I made. It took some effort to get a sword made from that Kurama's fang she said before she placed a katana with a well-made sukuban next to him. Naruto then glowed and a pair of fox ears and a long fox tail appeared attached to him. Ah the fusion is complete. I must say the ears and tail are a nice touch. They actually look a bit adorable even she mused as she thought with the ears and tails he looked way cuter than Mira at least may he be rotting in hell for trying to absorb her a while back. She then felt an approaching presence coming close and sighed before she made a portal appear behind her, until we meet again. She said as she walked into the portal. Disappearing from view. As soon as the portal faded a green-skinned alien wearing white landed next to the unconscious ninja. This was the Namekian known as Nail. I feel a great power from this boy Nail spoke to himself. Gazing at Naruto to determine his next course of action as Nail wasn't keen on bringing potential threats into a village. Nail bring the boy to me a boy said to Nail telepathically. Lord Guru? Nail asked in a manner of asking the wise leader if he was absolutely sure. He didn't want to risk anyone's lives if this was a trap. Especially the Grand Elder. I feel this boy has a pure heart, so there is no need to be afraid Guru's voice said. Very well, Lord Guru. I will bring him at once, Nail said as he picked up the boy in his arms and flew away. To the Grand Elder's hut. Later. Naruto groaned as he woke up oh, I'm never eating 56 bowls of ramen before bed again he moaned as his vision went from blurry to clear. Greetings my young Kitsune friend Guru said with a kind smile. Oh god aliens. Don't probe me. Probe Sasuke. He may enjoy it. Naruto shouted, freaking out. He did just wake up surrounded by aliens after all. Calm yourself and show some respect to the Grand Elder Nail said with a cold look. Look if you're here to declare war one surrender. Naruto said, still freaking the hell out. Lord Guru may I slap him? Nail asked the large Namekian in a chair. Calm yourself young Kitsune we are not gonna hurt you Guru said. Naruto soon calmed down and caught his breath before looking at Guru. Kitsune? Naruto asked. The ears and tail nail said flatly. Naruto reached for his ears and felt his human ears were gone, and he now had Kitsune ears on his head poking out of his hair. He then felt something along his back moving and looked to see a long bushy fox-like tail waving. Okami I'm a demon. Naruto yelled out. This is gonna be a long day nail side seeing Naruto freaking out again. A year later. Naruto was meditating on top of a tall rock. 
that had been a year since he had arrived on this planet and thankfully he had learned a lot. He had learned how to use Kai from Nail and learned about this planet from Guru. He had also learned about the katana he had been found with. Apparently it reacted to his Kai and was magic in nature when he channeled his Kai and it grew bigger. He decided to name the blade Karama after his friend who was now silent. Suddenly his eyes opened wide during his meditation as he felt several hundred power levels arrive on the planet via his energy sensing. Looks like we have visitors on the planet he grumbled as he got to his feet. Naruto Guruzva said in his mind. What's up Gramps? Naruto asked in his mind with a fond smile as he saw Guru as a grandfather figure. These visitors have a powerful leader that you have no chance against, despite your progress with training with Nail Guru said, as well the blonde was absolutely powerful, he could sense the leader was far beyond him. So what should I do? Naruto asked. I know you care for my people since you arrived, so if you wish to protect them, I will not stop you Guru said. Alright I'll at least see if I can steal a dragon ball and hide it from them. Naruto said as while he wasn't sure, he didn't want to take any chances of the potential foes getting them. He then floated into the air and took off flying towards a village in the opposite direction of where the majority of powers went. Thinking stealth would be key in this scenario. God I still love flying Naruto thought aloud with a smile. It was possibly his favorite aspect of using Kai. A week later. Naruto growled as he cut through another soldier that was attacking a village. So how many does that make? I've lost count at this point Naruto asked the remaining soldiers gesturing to the corpses. You dare resist the freeze of force. A soldier growled. Yeah this isn't even your planet. Another soldier yelled. Maybe not, but they have treated me well, and you attacking them for some asshole is a quick way to get yourself killed, Naruto said as he growled showing his fangs. We can take him men. A soldier said, preparing his blaster. Yeah his power level is 1000 another said. Naruto then appeared behind them and sheathed his sword. No. Rosberry. You bastard. A soldier said watching his fellow soldier die before he followed as well. A moment later all of the soldiers heads fell off their bodies. Geez if this Frieza was actually worth a damn he would have actual soldiers not these meat shields. Naruto muttered. He then paused as he saw an object in the sky appear and start to head for the surface of the planet. Great more visitors, well may as well go and greet them. And tell them about my lovely funeral services, Naruto muttered as he flew there. Hoping they were friendly and not with Frieza. But he wasn't getting his hopes up. As he got closer he felt some small power levels, but they didn't feel evil like Frieza's men. Don't tell me we actually got tourists. What could they possibly want to see? The trees. He muttered sarcastically. He soon saw a big ship that looked like some of the huts from the villages. Well this will be interesting. Naruto said. He saw two of Frieza's men floating nearby, pointing a blaster at the ship and three humans on the ground. One a bald man wearing orange, one a five-year-old with a bowl-cut hairstyle, and a, admittedly, very attractive woman around his age with blue hair. Oops sorry we destroyed your ship. One of Frieza's men laughed. So there is no escape for you now the second soldier said with a laugh. As the soldiers held blasters at the three humans, Naruto appeared behind them you idiots gloat far too much he said. Naruto quickly plunged his clawed hands through their backs ooh interesting. Unlike the rest of your cronies you too have spines. Naruto said as he literally ripped through their spinal column like tissue paper. He then swung around and sent the now dead minions flying into the lake, now I'm sorry you all had to see that. Naruto said to the three as he did just literally murder people in front of them. The bald man stuttered as Naruto floated down to them. Relax Baldi I'm not gonna hurt you three. You're not with them right? Naruto asked. Who's them? The five-year-old asked. The morons I just killed for destroying your ship Naruto said nonchalantly. Now we are stranded. The woman yelled in a panic as she looked at the ship. Is she gonna be okay? Naruto asked the bald man. The yeah, Bulma is always dramatic the bald man said. Doesn't that mean bloomers? Naruto asked with a small smirk. Shut up, I didn't pick it. Bulma yelled turning to look at Naruto, but paused as she finally got a look at him well hello. She said sidling up to Naruto a smile on her face. Oh great the bald man said with a roll of his eyes. Krillin why don't you and Gohan go investigate the situation? Uh miss I don't think it's safe to be alone, especially with the planet being invaded, Naruto said with a nervous smile, as he had zero experience with women. Oh please, they're both fighters. I on the other hand could use some protection, Bulma said with a smile as she looked at Naruto. Yeah but who's gonna protect him from you, Krillin grumbled Bulma grabbed Krillin and whispered in his ear, leave me alone with him and you'll get one million zini from me back on earth, she told the monk. Look we can talk when we get some cover and I explain the situation we are sitting ducks here Naruto said. Good idea mister you seem to know more than us about what's going on Gohan said. Naruto chuckled at this look kid call me Naruto Uzumaki he introduced. Like the Raymond topping. Krillin asked with a raised eyebrow. 
Naruto face planted at this. It obviously means like the storm you idiot Bulma said a strong name for a strong hunk she said. Hunk? A hunk of what? Naruto asked as he got up at the ground. Oh you're stupid huh? I can work with stupid. Mommy likey dummy Bulma said looking up and down Naruto's body. Licking her lips salaciously. That explains Yamcha ouch. Krillin yelled as Bulma slugged him on the head. Respect the dead, you idiot. Bulma yelled. Okay let's get moving. You two know how to suppress your power. Naruto asked Krillin and Gohan. Krillin and Gohan nodded as they figured Naruto was referring to the scouters the soldiers were using. Good, lower it and follow me he ordered with a no-nonsense tone. He then led the way across the rocky fields of Namek. As they left Krillin rolled his eyes as he heard Bulma mumble hate to see him go, but loved watching him leave. Will you grow up you're probably gonna scare him off Krillin whispered to the blue-haired woman. Yeah my mom says desperation isn't a good look for girls, Gohan whispered to Bulma. Your mother also married your father. Bulma deadpanned as she knew Goku was an idiot. A kind-hearted and brave one yes but still an idiot. Hey there's a big cave I use up ahead so keep moving you three. Naruto yelled to the others. The three ran up to him and saw the large dark cave. You live in a cave? Gohan asked curiously. Naruto shook his head at this well for now yeah. Can't exactly live in a hut that gets attention with Frieza's men around. Who is this Frieza guy? Bulma asked. Yeah we met some orphan kids on the way here that kept mentioning him and how he and his men took their homes and parents from them Krillin said. Yeah that sounds about right from what little I could get from some of his men Naruto said. I think he may be the leader of a group that takes over planets and sells them for a profit Krillin said, remembering what Raditz told him Bulma and Rashi a year or so ago when they met him. Why would they want Namek? It has no real valuable resources just cabbage and water Naruto said as he had been living off cabbage for a year. God he missed Raymond. Well there's the Dragon Balls Bulma said as she put down her backpack and started looking through it. How do you know about those? Naruto asked suddenly very serious. How do you know about them? Krillin asked curiously. I ask you first Chrome Dome Naruto told the monk. He was not about to let any of them fuck with the Dragon Balls without very good reason. Whoa hold on we only want to use them to revive our friends who were killed by some Saiyans, Gohan said to placate the blonde before things escalated. Oh okay I can respect that Naruto said. You believe us just like that? Bulma asked curiously. Naruto nodded at this the kid has honest eyes he said with a smile at Gohan. Gohan smiled at this but froze as Naruto and Krillin felt several power levels approaching. Lower your power now. Naruto whispered to them as he grabbed Bulma and they all got against the wall and looked outside to see several figures dashed past them. All incredibly tough but one in particular was massive. Extremely massive. Soon the powers all flew past them leaving the area. Naruto, Gohan, and Krillin let out a deep breath they were holding. Naruto let go of Bulma and walked outside to look after the group that just flew by. Krillin, did you feel those power levels? Gohan asked his friend. Yeah a lot of them were weak, but the one in the front Krillin said as he started to sweat. That's definitely freeze and Naruto growled as he flexed his claws. Bulma wasn't there a dragon ball in that direction? Gohan asked. Yeah and they had several dragon balls with them Krillin said. Bulma took out a small round device and pressed a button on it. Yeah they are heading for another dragon ball Bulma said, showing them the radar which showed four balls heading for another ball on the map. Do you guys have a way to track dragon balls? Naruto asked surprised. Yup the dragon radar. Invented it myself when I was 14. Bulma said happily and proudly. Well you must be smart. Are you a genius or something? Naruto asked. The smartest and sexiest genius from earth. Bulma briefs. Most call me queen you can call me anytime Bulma said flirtily. It was ignored. Earth huh? Do you guys have good food? I have spent the last year living off cabbage Naruto said hungrily. Yeah I have some of my favorite instant Raymond right here Bulma said. Raymond Naruto yelled in excitement. For now we should go after those guys Gohan said. Yeah if they are after the Dragon Balls Namekians might get hurt Krillin said. Naruto paused at this and growled okay put a pin in this for now these people have been great to me for the last year and I'll be damned if I let them suffer just for Raymond. Naruto. Krillin nodded at this okay Bulma you get to the cave and stay hidden, we will be back soon he told her. You're gonna leave me here alone. What if some of those soldiers find me? Bulma asked. Hang on I have an idea Naruto said as he created a cross with his fingers cage bunch and no jutsu he said as a shadow clone formed next to him. You can make clones. Krillin asked knowing the multiform technique was similar but split your power level. This was something different. Is this some kind of kitsu magic? Gohan asked remembering the stories he heard from Grandpa Ox King. Nah it's a technique of mine. I'll explain later the original Naruto said. Good looking, can make clones, strong, kind of dumb, jackpot. Bulma yelled with a smile. Hey I may be dumb, but I am not caveman stupid. 
the Naruto clone yelled. Good luck now, let's get moving. Naruto yelled as he threw his clone to Bulma before he, Gohan, and Krillin ran off. You will suffer for this. I swear vengeance. The clone yelled at Naruto as Bulma hugged his arm. As Naruto, Gohan, and Krillin jumped from island to island, Naruto turned his head to the monk. Is she always like that? Naruto asked Krillin. Nah she just had a bad breakup with one of the friends we are trying to revive Krillin said. What did she do? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Nothing actually. The guy hit on other girls because of his fame as a baseball player Krillin said. First off, what the hell's baseball? Second when he's revived I may kick him Naruto said. Why? Gohan asked curiously. Did real men don't cheat on their girlfriends Krillin explained as he loved Yamcha like a brother, but his arrogance made him insufferable at times. Yeah I may have never had a girlfriend, but even I know you don't do that shit Naruto said. Well something tells me by the time we leave Namek he's gonna have his first girlfriend Krillin mumbled. I can hear you Naruto said pointing at his kitsune ears. Oh. You're like Mr. Piccolo. Gohan said with a smile. What's a Piccolo? He asked. He's from Namak and we are looking to revive him too Krillin said. Is that why you know about Dragon Balls? Naruto asked curiously. Yup see when he died saving Gohan our Dragon Balls turned to stone Krillin said. Ah I get it you all want your friends back and went into space to use the Dragon Balls here to get your friends and your own Dragon Balls back, Naruto said with a smile as he liked loyalty like that. Yeah our dragon can't bring who have died before. So we wanted to use yours to get back ours and see if we can revive some who had previously died. Krillin explained. This has happened before. Naruto asked. Yeah we keep things interesting on earth, Krillin said with a sheepish smile. Cool if I help you guys can I bum a ride to your planet? Naruto asked. As long as you're friendly then sure Gohan said with a smile as he could tell Naruto wasn't like Vegeta. Oh I'll be on my best behavior. Ninja's honor he said happily. He really wanted to eat things that weren't cabbage after all. Hours later. We're here. They're just beyond that ridge Naruto said as he started to crouch and survey the village below. Do you have a plan? Gohan asked as he and Krillin also crouched and followed Naruto. Yup walk in, exterminate some pests, walk out Naruto said. You think you can take on Frieza? Krillin asked. Nope. Naruto admitted, but I can draw his attention while you sneak and collect the balls Naruto said. What about his men? Krillin asked. Leave that to me and Kurama here, Naruto said with a smile as he unsheathed his katana on his waist. Alright good luck Krillin said as he and Gohan were gonna wait for the most opportune moment to sneak in. Meanwhile on a different planet. Toa watched through her crystal ball with her demonic magic as Naruto prepared to face Frieza's forces. Haha. <laughs> Do make this entertaining for me, my pet. She giggled waiting for the show of bloodshed to start. Back on Namek. Naruto made it over the cliff and saw what was going on in the village. Namekian corpses strewn about. Not just men but even children. Naruto saw what looked like a big spiky pink man killing some Namekian warriors. Naruto. An old Namekian who was guarding two children yelled with a smile on his face. Elder Murray. Run now. Take your children and go Naruto said monotonously. Oh. Is this another protector? An alien in a floating pod asked. I am these people's ally and defender Naruto said coldly to the alien. Interesting you're obviously not from this planet. Where are you from? The alien asked curiously. Doesn't look like an alien race we have met Lord Freeze a man with blue skin who was carrying two Dragon Balls said. Indeed it does not Zarbon. Dodoria when you're done playing with those toy soldiers do be a lad and interrogate this one for answers Frieza ordered. No problem Lord Frieza. This chump still uses a sword for crying out loud the name Dodoria said. Okay you first fat boy Naruto growled as he flexed his claws and rushed at the pink skinned alien. Dodoria's scouter beeped as Naruto charged. It shattered immediately as he glanced at the power. Distracting him. Naruto slugged the pink alien in the gut hard making him bend over. Naruto grabbed Dodoria by one of his head spikes. Uh, I expected you to go down with one hit like your other soldiers I have been killing since you losers arrived, Naruto said with a glare. Oh ho. So it's been you doing that Frieza said with an interested look you do seem to pack quite a power there. And savagery too from how you left our men's Arban said, recalling that a lot of their soldiers were ripped to pieces. L Lord Frieza help me. Dodoria begged. Hey big man you were perfectly fine killing my friends just now. Don't be such a coward now that they have a way to fight back. Naruto yelled as a dark orange aura engulfed him. Ooh what a pretty light show Frieza said nonchalantly. Zarbon activated his scouter and his eyes widened in surprise before it shattered. L Lord Frieza his power is at least 50.000. Interesting. Tell me would you be interested in joining me? Your power is wasted on these backwater fools. 
Naruto glared at Frieza as he clenched his claws on Dodoria's head, making him yell in agony as his claws cut into his flesh. Suddenly everyone heard a wet crunch as they saw Naruto slice Dodoria's head off with Kurama and throw it at Frieza. Literally throwing the severed head at the Emperor in a floating pod. When I'm done with pretty boy over there your next Naruto growled. Oh ho ho. I admire those guts. Zarbin make them spill on the ground for me Frieza ordered. Zarbin hesitated but nodded as he put down his two dragon balls. So how many fangirls do you have? Naruto asked Zarbin. Frieza laughed at this while Zarbin sputtered. Why does a brute like you need to know? Zarbin stuttered out. I was just curious. Most pretty boys like you have those and you reminded me of one named Sasuke. Only less brooding Naruto said. I don't know what a Sasuke is, but he sounds emo Frieza said. He was but that doesn't matter, Naruto said as he readied his sword and dashed at Zarbin. Zarbin blocked with his shoulder, but at the last minute he dodged to the side. Oh ho. That's not a regular katana, is it my little kitsune? Frieza asked as he viewed this as entertainment for him. Nope it's made from the fang of a demon friend of mine, Naruto said as he could tell that was the case when in the past year he heard nothing from Kurama. Especially after eating nothing but cabbage. Kurama hated cabbage. Oh ho so it's magic in nature then Frieza said knowing a little about the demon race. If the majority weren't trapped he probably would employ them. Or kill them. Depending on his mood that day. Such a barbaric way that you fight swinging that massive sword like an untrained fool's Arban said. Look if this is you trying to say I'm overcompensating I'm not. That being said I'm pretty sure there's a nightclub three planets away that you'd fit right in at Naruto said. Silence. Zarbin yelled as he charged at Naruto. Meanwhile Krillin and Gohin were sneaking over to Muri and his children, as well as the Dragon Balls. Gohin waved at Muri and signaled at him to follow him. Meanwhile, Krillin used the multiform technique to make three more of himself and go for the four unguarded Dragon Balls. This is just sad Naruto said as Zarbin kept trying to kick him and he was dodging by craning his head left and right. Zarbin stopped holding back. Frieza yelled sounding annoyed. So you were holding back Naruto said with a smirk at Zarbin. But my lord I shan't use that grotesque form. What? You hold back because it makes you ugly? Naruto asked with a flat look. You don't understand what I need to do to maintain my beauty, you brute. Zarbin roared. Well if you transform your body will match your personality. Though to me you're a 6 out of 10 as you are Naruto said with a smirk. That's it. Zarbin yelled as in an instant his muscles bulged and his face became more monstrous. Wow you may be the second ugliest bastard I've ever met Naruto said, seeing Zarbin's transformation. Die. Zarbin roared and charged at Naruto in a blind rage. You first asshole Naruto said as he channeled power though his blade and sent an energy slash at Zarbin. Zarbin instantly dogged the attack and sent a blast at Naruto who blocked with his katana and sent the blast at the ground below, which struck some dead corpses of Frieza's men. No. The scouters. I just ordered those. Frieza yelled caring more about the tech than the many, many corpses of his own soldiers. Naruto smirked at this and noticed that Krillin and Gohin were pretty far from them now. Well this was fun and I did my job. So until next time. Stay ugly you too. Naruto shouted as he flew away with a burst of his power. Why would he flee? Zarbin asked. I honestly have no idea Frieza said. Wait Lord Frieza the Dragon Balls and Namekians are gone. Zarbin yelled as he shrunk back to his regular form. Frieza took a breath. That. That. That insolent little maggot. Zarbin. After him. Now. I want his corpse for the bumper of the ship or I'll be tying yours to it instead. Frieza roared in rage as Zarbin quickly flew after Naruto. But Naruto. Naruto was already far away from the village, but he soon felt a massive amount of power. Geez that Frieza guy is crazy strong Naruto thought. As he flew he saw a figure floating in front of him wearing the same armor as the soldiers he decimated, but in blue with a red scouter on his face and black spiky hair. Naruto stopped in front of the figure and placed his palm on his sword, just in case who are you? He asked. I should be asking you that. You're not one of Frieza's soldiers otherwise I'd have heard of you. Or killed you. And you're obviously not an Amikian so who or what are you? The man asked. You're not with Frieza. You a friend of the Earthlings? Naruto asked. There are Earthlings here? Vegeta asked coldly. Wait are you Vegeta? Naruto asked thinking of the story Gohan and Krillin told him of their encounter with the Saiyans on the way to the cliff. Prince Vegeta to you scum. Vegeta roared. And be a prince of a dead race, Naruto said with a glare as he could tell this guy was just as cold as Frieza's men. Look who's talking. Never seen one of whatever you are before. You look like a filthy human crossed with a disgusting earth fox. I know I look cool, what of it? Naruto asked as he actually liked how he looked now. So what are you? The king of the fox people. Vegeta asked sarcastically. 
Nah I'm one of a kind and I'm friends with an Amikians Naruto said simply. Oh good then you can point me to some dragon balls before I vaporize you to ash. Vegeta said. Naruto glared at Vegeta at this before he unsheathed his sword transforming it not happening he said. Interesting sword you got there, but it's no match against the glorious might of a Saiyan. Vegeta roared taking his battle stance. Well at least your humble Naruto said with a smirk as he readied his blade. Before they could fight Zarbon finally caught up. Oh good pretty boy is here to tag in Naruto said as he sheathed his sword. Zarbon. The hell are you doing here? Shouldn't you be off polishing Frieza's armor? Vegeta asked smugly. Before Zarbon could respond Naruto made a cross sign and in a massive poof of smoke he made dozens of shadow clones. Patch me if you can. The Naruto's yelled as they all took off in random directions. Since when the hell is that an ability? Vegeta asked as he had killed many, many people and never once saw that as an ability. Curses. Because of you that fool got away. Now I have lost Lord Frieza's dragon balls. Zarbon yelled. That Kitsune fool has dragon balls, Vegeta yelled as he now had more reason to kill him. This is all your fault Vegeta. You Saiyans always get in the way. No wonder Lord Frieza exterminated you filthy monkeys. Vegeta glared at Zarbon at this information oh is that right. I don't particularly care for the rest of the trash that perished back then, but I suppose as the only worthy Saiyan alive, I should avenge them and I'll start by taking your skull as a cup. Vegeta roared as he powered up. Zarbon powered up and charged at Vegeta. Meanwhile Naruto was actually watching them from afar. His power concealed. How the prince has some moves he said watching Vegeta tossing Zarbon around. However he knew if Zarbon transformed he'd be stronger than Vegeta. Vegeta's power was only a bit higher than Zarbon's power currently. He then saw them stop fighting and start to talk before Zarbon transformed and charged at Vegeta. Proceeding to bulldoze Vegeta. So Frieza transforms. Fuck Naruto said as his ears picked up their conversation. He knew he couldn't beat Frieza as he was now and now that he knew Frieza could transform, he was even more sure he can't win against the tyrant. But maybe, maybe he could use his shinobi tactics and sneak out a victory against the dictator. I should ask old man Guru for advice after I check in with the others, Naruto said as he decided to take off back to the cave they left Bulma at. Especially since he just saw Zarbon throw Vegeta into the ground and cause a literal explosion. Later. Naruto landed in front of the cave and stretched his muscles as he walked towards the cave's entrance. Who's there? Krillin yelled as he ran out Gohin with him. It's me relax Naruto said waving his hand. Oh sorry MR. Naruto. We're still getting used to your energy presence. Gohin said. No problem kid so you get the old man and kids in the cave. Naruto asked. Yeah along with the dragon balls Gohin said. But we have four hidden now and all our enemies believe I stole them. They'll prioritize finding me most likely. I felt a fight going on nearby. Was that you? Krillin asked. No that was the pretty boy and the prince of assholes fighting Naruto said. Oh yeah I forgot the Jedi's here and stronger than when we were on earth, Krillin said with a sigh. Well pretty boy is cleaning his clock last I saw. I'm still confused how throwing someone into the ground creates an explosion. Not an energy explosion, I mean a literal explosion of fire. Naruto said. Is Naruto back? I made Raymon. Bulma's voice yelled from inside the cave. Rai me in. Naruto shouted running past the others hey Muri and kids good to see you. Rai am in. He shouted dashing past them as well. Why is it the strong ones that are goofballs? Gohin asked Krillin. Did that's a question I'm sure will never be answered. Krillin said as he knew better than to question it after years and years of fighting alongside Goku. 30 minutes later. Naruto slammed his empty bowl on the table and sighed happily as he patted his stomach. Oh wow Bulma said, seeing the stacks of empty bowls of Raymond. While also vowing to never let Naruto and Goku have a Raymond eating contest. I lost count after 20 Krillin said. It's 50 Gohin said after looking at the pile. Ah that was the greatest. And not cabbage. Naruto cheered as he loved Raymond and was also just really happy to not have been eating cabbage again. I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I feel you should go see Guru along with your friend Krillin Mori said. Yeah I was gonna go see him after checking on you all Naruto said before he looked around. When did a house appear in this cave? He asked. This caused Krillin, Gohin and Bulma to face plant. You just now noticed it? Bulma asked incredulously. Well, I noticed the Raymond first. How did this get here? Naruto asked curiously. And Kami he's cute, Bulma muttered before turning to him oh I had one stowed away in my capsule she said, holding up a capsule. So it's like a seal, but it's an item? Naruto asked curiously. What's a seal? She asked. Same thing pretty much though yours doesn't require skills in calligraphy Naruto said, keeping it simple. I'll have to ask you to show me later as that sounds very interesting Bulma said. No problem you made me Raymond so I can do that Naruto said with a smile. 
these simple-minded like Goku Krillin said seeing some similarities. Well is there anything else me making you Raymond would also pay for so to speak. She asked batting her eyelashes at the blonde. Okay Krillin let's go. Naruto yelled blushing as he walked past Krillin and dragged him off. Oh he's shy that's so cute. Bulma said with a smile. Elder, what did we just witness? One of the Namekian children asked. I have no idea Murray asked with a shake of his head. A day later. Naruto and Krillin were still flying towards Guru's home. How far is this place? And why hasn't it gotten dark here? Krillin asked. Krillin there is no night. It's a planet with three suns Naruto deadpanned. Must ruin your sleep schedule Krillin said. You have no idea Naruto said with a sigh. They soon came up on a tall rock with a very large hut on top of it and an Amikian standing guard. One Naruto recognized. Hey Nail Naruto said with a smile as him and Krillin arrived. Naruto. What are you doing here? And why did you bring a pet? He asked confused never having seen an earthling. He's a friend he helped me save some Namekians and some Dragon Balls, Naruto said while Krillin salted at being called a pet. Ah forgive me pet of Naruto. I am glad to hear of you helping us Nail said in thanks. He's sentient like us Nail Naruto said finding this sad. I know I just thought I'd try my hand at a prank like you suggested Nail said. Ha. Ah. So I finally gave you a sense of humor. Naruto said with a smile. Guru knew you were coming. Please follow me Nail said gesturing for the two to follow him. I can never let Piccolo know about being called a pet by an Amiki and Krillin muttered with a sigh. They followed Nail inside and soon were in front of Guru. Bo Krillin said seeing the size of Guru. Yeah, I know. The old man is pretty big Naruto said with a smile. Welcome back Naruto I have felt your battles with the invaders Guru said, as well he didn't enjoy violence, he was proud Naruto was standing up for the Namekians that couldn't fight. Yeah I just wish I could save more of them Naruto said with a frown. We could use your dragon balls to revive them all Krillin said hoping to help. The dragon balls here can only bring back one person at a time if they were used to revive people, Guru said, as he had made the dragon balls. He knew the limits. Oh geez Krillin said with a frown. Wait, can yours revive multiple people? Naruto asked curiously. His people had dragon balls. Nail asked surprised. Guru looked at Krillin and held his hand out please come closer so I can see your memories Guru asked kindly. Krillin nodded and approached and let Guru place his hand on his head. Ah I see an Amikian was sent to earth as a child and became earth's guardian. Guru said with a smile. That's right, but Kami died when Piccolo died fighting a Saiyan Krillin said. Huh? Naruto asked, confused your god is an Amikian? He asked in his confusion. Um, this Piccolo and Kami were connected, and when one died the other did too. Thus rendering your Dragon Balls unusable Guru said. Krillin nodded at this with a frown. Guru reached up for the Dragon Ball on his chair you have a good spirit, so I will let you have this Dragon Ball. But I also sense something more with you. Guru said. Wait, you can unlock someone's potential. Naruto asked getting what the Grand Elder meant. Yes and I didn't do it for you because you were already learning the basics and your full potential was too much of a burden a year ago, Guru said, knowing what Naruto was thinking. Well let's do this then we definitely need a boost Naruto said. The Guru held his hand over Naruto's head and a wide aura sprang up around Naruto. After a few seconds Guru panted. I was only able to unlock a fraction of your potential. There is much potential in you, but to unlock it fully is beyond my power. Guru explained. I appreciate it regardless, old man, do you want to rest after that? Naruto asked as Krillin nodded. Yeah as much as I'd love to have my potential unlocked, I wouldn't want it to cost your health, Krillin said. Nonsense my friend. Old as I may be I can still do this. Plus all I'm really doing is bringing out what's already there Guru explained. Naruto nodded at this and looked at Krillin and nodded at him. Letting Krillin know he could get his unlocked now. Guru placed his hand on Krillin's head and immediately after a wide aura shot out of Krillin. Whoa. Krillin explained in shock by how powerful he now felt. How not bad Naruto said with a smile as he felt Krillin's new power. Krillin smiled at this and then looked at Guru hey can you do this for kids? He asked. Perhaps. It requires someone with potential needing to be unlocked. As long as they have that I see no reason why not Guru explained. This kid is half Saiyan trust me he has potential Naruto said with a smile. Very well. If you can bring him here I can unlock his power. Okay Krillin you go get Gohan and bring him here I'm gonna go find Freeze as ship Naruto said. For what? Krillin asked. He has one of the Dragon Balls. Naruto explained as they had stolen four of the five balls. The last two were here at Guru's and one hidden at another Namekian village. Okay, but be careful. You may have your potential unlocked, but you aren't that strong Krillin said as he didn't think he could take Frieza. Naruto nodded as he took off. He better be careful. 
I really don't want Bulma to kill me if something happens to her new prey, Krillin muttered before he took off back towards their cave. But Naruto. As Naruto flew he felt his katana pulse trying to get his attention. Naruto stopped flying and looked at his katana, and as he focused on it, he felt himself enter his mindscape. Naruto's mindscape. Naruto was walking down a dark sower until he came to a familiar sight. A giant red fox with nine tails. It's about time you heard me again. Kurama's voice yelled out. So that's where you were. Your yin half is in me and your yang half is in the sword. Naruto summarized as he was still confused why he couldn't speak to either for an entire year. Kurama looked at Naruto and noticed his new kitsune ears poking out of his head and his claws and single kitsune tail yay, that old alien unlocking your potential, made it so we can talk again, also what's with the new look you trying to suck up? He asked. Hey I showed up here looking this way plus I like it Naruto said. Well my power is gonna take getting used to with this whole Kai and Katana thing going on, Kurama said, as this was beyond anything back in their world. Though Kurama also wondered how did they get here. So you have access to my memories or do you need a summary? Naruto asked. No no I'm all caught up. That freezer guy makes me look like a saint Kurama said with a growl. It's freeze and Naruto said chuckling. I know Kurama said with a smirk. Naruto smiled at this glad Kurama hadn't changed. Anyway I have your back kid so go fuck some shit up. In the name of Kurama. The great and mighty. Kurama bellowed. Glad to see you're still humble Naruto said with a roll of his eyes before he disappeared from his mindscape. That blue haired chick is going to rock his world, Kurama said after Naruto disappeared. Her flirting with the blonde was amusing to him after viewing what he had missed. Also the next chance he got he was totally mocking Naruto for having to eat nothing but cabbage for a year. But Toa. Watching from her crystal ball the beautiful blue skinned demon smirked. Seems he has access to the fox's power quicker than I anticipated if he can speak to him again. Toa said with a smirk. Hehe <laughs> things are becoming even more interesting with you my pet Toa said as she viewed Naruto's current journey. At this rate she may be able to accelerate her plans even faster. But Naruto. Okay let's see where Frieza is Naruto said as he landed on a rock and used his senses to see what's going on around him. He felt two powers nearby which he recognized as Gohan and Vegeta. Shit Naruto muttered as he wasn't sure whether to stop his course and help Gohan in case Vegeta tried something or if he should continue hunting for Frieza's ship. Damn it. He growled as he flew towards the prince and half Saiyan's location. He soon arrived at the same location as Vegeta and Gohan. Naruto saw that Vegeta had a Dragon Ball which he recognized as the one Guru gave Krillin. Naruto growled at this and unsheathed his blade and transformed it okay Prince of Assholes, where did you get that? He said, holding it at Vegeta's neck. Oh took it from the bald pest and annoying woman, after I ripped through Zarbon like wet space tissue paper Vegeta explained smugly. I don't want to hear about your bedroom activities Naruto said flatly. What the? I'll have you know I don't swing that way. Zarbon may have, however. Even Frieza was convinced he was dating someone named Chuck Vegeta said as. I knew it Naruto said with a smirk. Did you get the other Dragon Balls? Gohan asked. Yes I did I already took the other four you two had and this was the last one which I'm taking to my hideout Vegeta said. I don't see how you're going anywhere once my sword pierces your throat like pretty boys would have done to his boyfriend Naruto quipped. Okay enough. I have a score to settle with you. Vegeta yelled as he powered up and batted Naruto's blade away. Geez you're way stronger now Naruto said as he jumped back. Yes barring Frieza I am the strongest on this god forsaken planet. Vegeta smugly said. Naruto glared at Vegeta at this and looked at Gohan kid get to Krillin now he said as he sheathed his katana. Gohan nodded and flew off before grabbing a dragon ball from behind a rock and took off at full speed. That rat had a dragon ball Vegeta yelled, realizing that Gohan took the ball he had hidden in the water near the village he slaughtered. Oh does that upset you, your majesty? He asked mockingly. Then Naruto jumped forward and kicked the dragon ball he had out of Vegeta's hand and then swung his sword at him starting the battle. You worthless peon. You dare cross the prince of all Saiyans, I'll tie your corpse to my pod. Vegeta roar. Naruto smirked as he cracked his clawed hands. Try me. Bring all four feet of you. Or should I count your hair too shorty? Naruto mocked. Vegeta yelled as he charged at Naruto. Naruto powered up and started to fight with Vegeta. The two trading punches and kicks in a deadly dance of fists and feet. Vegeta sent a punch at Naruto's ribsage, but Naruto grabbed Vegeta's hand and slammed him full force into the dirt. Making a small crater appear. So be honest is this a short guy thing? Or is this an overcompensation thing? Naruto asked. Vegeta yelled as he powered up and released a burst of power which made Naruto let go. Geez he's actually powerful now Naruto thought. I've had enough of your insolence. Vegeta roared. As Vegeta charged at Naruto he suddenly stopped and looked up at the sky and started to sweat. 
Naruto also looked up and soon felt a massive amount of power approaching the planet. Friends of yours? Naruto asked. Of course not you buffoon. Damn it that coward Frieza called in the Jinyu force. Vegeta yelled. How bad are they? Naruto asked seriously. There are five of them and they are all powerful and the elite of Frieza's army Vegeta said. So they are too much for the prince of all Saiyans. Naruto asked. Vegeta growled at this but said nothing. Looks like you are gonna need help with these guys. Come on I want to hear you say it Naruto said knowing it would piss off Vegeta. Vegeta watched as what looked like five pods landed nearby. I need help Vegeta admitted. Cool I want to hurt Frieza more than you so I can see a temporary alliance Naruto said. You're a sick bastard. You sure you're not part Saiyan? Vegeta asked. I don't come from a race of planet brokers so watch it Naruto said. Watch it mutt. We Saiyans are a glorious race Vegeta bit out. This mud is gonna bite you if you don't watch your mouth. Naruto yelled as he showed his fangs. Suddenly Gohan and Krillin arrived carrying the dragon balls. Gohan got his boost let's summon the dragon now. Tillin said. The Jedi looked for the ball Naruto made him drop and when he saw it he shot towards it but suddenly five figures appeared in front of him blocking his way. Ah crap the Jedi sighed. So these are the elite Jinyu force. Naruto asked seeing them in all their glory. They look ridiculous. Especially the little green one. He looks like a four-eyed dog slept with a spoiled cabbage Naruto said mockingly. The green one's face turned red at this. Relax gold oh lord Frieza wants that one alive the purple one said as he tapped his scouter. Yes Captain Jinyu Goldo said after talking a calming breath. Anything I should know. Naruto whispered to Vegeta. They will play dirty if needed so don't show mercy Vegeta said. Good thing there's no rules in a fight Naruto smirked. Well well Vegeta. It seems like you have really made Lord Frieza mad this time the blue one said. This was Birder. You're lucky he wants you alive too the red one with white hair said. This was Jice. Uh I don't recognize his race captain the biggest one said pointing at Naruto. This was Rackham. Neither do I, but that doesn't matter what matters is getting the Dragon Balls Jinyu said. Already done Captain Goldo said with a smirk as he had the Dragon Balls in front of him. Naruto's eyes widened at this as he looked behind him seeing that the Dragon Balls were gone. What the? Gohan said. Well done, Goldo. That makes all seven. I shall bring these to Lord Frieza. Do be back by 0900 and make sure to bring Vegeta and the fox alive. The others though, have fun. Jinyu said as he flew off with all seven Dragon Balls. So we have to fight what the hell are they even doing? Naruto genuinely asked as these elite fighters seemed like absolute morons. They are playing rock, paper, scissors to decide who fights who Krillin said also confused. Well it's four on four let's just kill them, Naruto said as he saw no reason to play their games. Don't be a fool they may be stupid, but they are powerful it's best to play along and fight one at a time Vegeta said. Vegeta knows them I think we should listen to him Gohan said. Fine. I get the fox. Rackham yelled with a smile. Oh good the big tough stupid one Naruto said. Aren't they all stupid? Gohan asked. Naruto laughed at this good point kid. Goldo gets the brats Jai said. I'm an adult. Krillin shouted. Relax you're taller than frog boy Naruto said with a smile. Vegeta's mouth twitched at this as he tried not to smile at this. Maybe the fox bastard wasn't all bad if he could insult Goldo like that. I'm gonna enjoy killing you. Goldo yelled in a rage. You only get the brats Goldo Birder said. Vegeta turned to Gohan and Krillin be careful he has psychic powers. Want to be specific? Naruto asked. I'm stopping, paralysis, and telekinesis Vegeta explained. Geez that's actually impressive for this guy. He can do all that but can't ride the ferris wheel Naruto quipped. Rackham, Jice, and Birder all snorted and started to laugh while Goldo grit his teeth in rage. Naruto turned to Krillin and Gohan okay you two don't be morons go all out and take him out. If he gets desperate he may play dirty he said. Krillin and Gohan nodded as they approached the battlefield. Ten space bucks on the short one Birder called. Which one? Rackham asked cluelessly. These Frieza has no standards does he? Naruto asked Vegeta. You've met Zarbin the hell do you think? Vegeta deadpanned. I think this is gonna be a fun fight I might actually have to try, Naruto said with a smile. Wait a minute you were holding back before. Vegeta asked him angrily. Yup Naruto said cheerily while Vegeta growled. Gohan and Krillin both powered up and charged at Goldo. Before either could get close he disappeared. Naruto looked around and found Goldo nearby panting for breath. Dude you really are out of shape aren't you? Maybe you should cut down on the cookies and ice cream, Naruto said with a smirk. Before Goldo could respond he saw Gohan and Krillin charging at him. He then held out his hands and in an instant Gohan and Krillin were frozen in place. You fools. My psychic powers are unrivaled by all. And once I'm done with you two the mud and Vegeta will be, he suddenly stopped speaking as Naruto thrusted his clawed hand in his back. 
Naruto pulled out his claw from Goldo's back and pulled out his heart. You shouldn't eat so much junk food. You can get a heart attack that way Naruto said before crushing the organ in his hand. Goldo fell to the ground dead as Gohan and Krillin dropped to the ground. Pretty cold-blooded aren't you? Krillin asked. What? You're my friends. Sumi I value you more than this piece of garbage, Naruto said as he kicked Goldo's lifeless body. Since we're taking you alive, any interest in joining the force? Jice asked. Yeah we could put in a word with the captain Birder said. Not happening so who first? Naruto growled ready to fight. Me and Birder will take on Vegeta while you can fight Rackham Jai said. You sure you won't need help? Naruto asked Vegeta as he knew even he would have problems with two opponents. We Saiyans get stronger every time we fight. It would be an insult to my heritage to accept help in battle. Vegeta said. So you're all masochists? Naruto asked. That's what you got from that Vegeta yelled. Alright you can have scales and locks so luscious over there. I'll take on fire crotch. Naruto quipped. Is everything a joke to you Vegeta roared. Yup. Especially you Naruto shot back as he approached Rackham. Haunted city. This is ridiculous. A voice yelled out in the library of the time nest. She was short and had pink skin and had pointed ears. I can't change back history for some reason. This boy shouldn't be there she said. I think we have a bigger problem Kronoa old Kai said as he entered the room. Oh what now? Demigra revived, Mira, Broly. She asked in exasperation. The old Kai moved aside and showed a boy with short-cut purple hair, and he had kitsune ears poking out of his hair, along with a kitsune tail. Trunks? She asked hesitantly. That's me. Trunks said with a smile that looked similar to Naruto's. Oh geez Kronoa said as she slapped her forehead. This is strange. This time displacement is something that I should be able to fix easily, but it seems to have integrated too well, Kronoa said, as this change in history was something she should have been able to fix but couldn't. Almost as if something was allowing it to happen normally. It also changed the timeline in other ways, Elder Kai said. Like a butterfly effect, Trunk said with a nod. Well at least you're still smart, Kronoa said with a sigh of relief. Well I'm the smart one unlike my twin, Trunk said with a prideful smile. Twin? Both Kronoa and Elder Kai asked at once. I heard that. A female voice yelled from outside. This change I should be able to fix but can't. Who could make it so I couldn't write history the way it should? Kronoa thought aloud in confusion. That was a very, very short list after all. Like hell you will. I like existing. A redeated woman yelled as she entered the room she also had a kitsune tail and ears poking out of the top of her head. Meet my twin sis Kashina Trunk said with a sheepish smile. Kronoa's eyes widened both at the twin and at who could possibly have the power to make her unable to fix a mistake in time. Zeno-sama is allowing this Kronoa thought. If it was a simple change in history she'd be able to fix it in a snap. But if the Omni King wanted this change then there was nothing she could do. Except ask why. Why are you here sis? Trunks asked with a sigh at his twin. Oh yeah I was sent with a message from the Omni Midget and I quote. Leave Naruto in the timeline he's fun. Unquote Kashina said sounding bored as she picked at her ear. Prano and Elder Kai paled. They couldn't refute orders from the Omni King. Omni Midget? Really? Trunks asked sighing at his twin's antics. Well it's better than what Uncle Goku calls him Kashina said shrugging. Uncle what the hell is going on? Chrono yelled. Calm down I'll explain Trunks said holding up his hands to calm her down. You think this is bad wait until you see Pops Harem and his other kids, Kashina said with a mischievous smile. This caused the elder Kai to shoot back with a nosebleed into a wall. Chrono meanwhile did the only thing she could. She fainted. With a very small trail of blood leaking from her nose. Trunks sighed at this and looked at his twin you were going for that weren't you? He asked. Hey I didn't tell her she's one of Pops women did I? Kashina said with a giggle. Probably cause she'll find out soon. After all her memories probably have a delay Trunk said. Yeah she hasn't met Pops yet she has to go meet him, then her future self will arrive here, Kashina said. Timelines are bullshit Trunk sighed. Yup let's go get some Raymond Kashina said with a smile. Right behind you sis Trunk said with a smile of his own as he followed his twin. Naruto stepped forward across from Rikun. So this is the strongest member of your force aside from your captain? Naruto asked. Pretty much whiskers so don't expect me to go easy on you, Rackham said with a confident smile. Oh no. See I don't want you to give me a handicap. I want to see if you need one from me Naruto said with a smirk. Ha ah, you're a funny little runt Rackham said with a laugh. Are you two gonna fight or flirt? Vegeta asked, not understanding how they were being so civil before a damn teeth match. Sorry I don't swing that way prince. Does he? Cause if so maybe he's looking for someone now that Zarbin's pushing up daisies, Naruto joked before he blocked a punch from Rikum and caught it. Sorry did I touch a nerve? Naruto asked with a smirk. 
How you actually caught my punch Rackham said in mild surprise. Yeah. Why was that your strongest and fastest punch? Naruto asked him. I'll show you who's the strongest. Rackham growled as he jumped back and charged his mouth with energy. Oh. Congratulations, you're officially the first person to use an energy attack on me since you all invaded, Naruto said as he just stood there, wanting to see this move. Rikumaracer cannon. He shouted, firing a purple beam from his mouth at Naruto. Oh this is gonna be good Naruto smirked as he held Kurama's fang in front of him, pointing directly at the oncoming beam. The beam hit the tip of the blade and split down the middle. Spreading and not even touching Naruto as the now twin streams fired into a mountain behind him. And the fox man now standing harmlessly with the tip of the sword smoking. Uh so my hunch about this sword being able to affect Kai was right, Naruto said with a smirk. You went into battle with just a hunch, Kurama yelled at Naruto from his cell. Oh like you haven't done something like that before with your incredible might and power Naruto pointed out. Before Kurama could respond Rackham shot forward at Naruto and they started to trade blows with Naruto blocking with his sword. Hold. Still. So. I. Can. Punch. You. Rikum shouted. Technically I'm blocking not dodging Naruto said with a smirk as he blocked another punch with his sword. GRR. Rikum growled and sent a kick at Naruto who caught it one-handed. Well you showed me one of your techniques before. Want to see one of mine? Naruto asked with a vicious grin. As he threw Rackham one-handed into the air. Naruto charged some orange Kai into his free hand and sent a beam at the flying man. Rackham dodged the beam immediately. Ha ha. You missed me. Rackham mocked. Oh did I? Naruto asked still firing the beam. Ha. Huh? Rikum asked confused. Spiral flash. Naruto yelled as the tail end of the beam turned around in a spiral before flying straight at Rikum and hitting him from behind. Rackham screamed as the beam hit him and sent him flying down into the ground, kicking up some dust. Rackham groaned as he got up, his armor obliterated, and as the dust cleared he saw Naruto above him, his blade up ready to swing it down at him. Your time's up. Naruto shouted as he swung the blade intent on taking Rackham's head. However, Naruto was suddenly sent skidding back from a blow to his back. Who has the balls? Naruto growled angrily at his fight getting interrupted. He looked and saw Birder and Jai standing in front of Rackham. Weren't you two morons fighting Vegeta? Naruto asked as he glared at Jais and Birder. Birder smirked at this that fool didn't last long against the two of us. Yea even his little earth friends trying to help him didn't make any difference, Jai said. Naruto looked to the side and saw that Vegeta Gohan and Krillin were down, but thankfully still alive. Does it make you feel good to beat up kids? Naruto asked with a growl at seeing Gohan. Actually yes Jai said without hesitation. We've done it so many times, why should now be any different? Birder pointed out. Frieza had no issues with genocide. What's one more body? Well at least now I won't feel bad for what I'm about to do Naruto said as he cracked his neck and sheathed his sword. And what is that? Rackham asked as they watched Naruto crack his claws. I'm going to rip all of your organs from your bodies. Naruto roared as he let loose his power and charged at them. Birder, believing his speed would help him, he charged at Naruto hoping to intercept. As the speed alien charged at Naruto from his side, Naruto looked to the side and glared at him. H he can see me Birder thought in shock. He was the fastest in the universe. Before he could do anything Naruto slashed at him with his claw using Kai to send some fire blades of Kai at Birder. The blades actually ripped into Birder and sliced his legs from his body. Naruto smirked at the image of the alien falling to the floor. Screaming before he grabbed Rikum by his throat as he appeared behind him ready to attack Naruto. Ah wait. He choked out. Naruto said nothing as he slammed Rikum into the ground hard making a crater, when the dust cleared Jais saw Naruto had Rikum on the ground and had his arms in his hands ready to break them, Birder laid on the ground his chest cut open, exposing some of his organs. And how about you with a bad sunburn? Want to try and help your two friends here? Or do you want to piss yourself and run like a coward? Naruto asked tugging Rackham's arms to make the man scream. Aya captain. Jai screamed flying away. Naruto scoffed at this as he held Rackham in place so any last words. Naruto asked your fast friend didn't make it so he died quick, but I want to know your final thoughts before I send you off to hell. The captain will kill you. Rackham groaned out in pain. He will try Naruto said before he stomped hard on Rackham's head killing him and letting the brain matter and blood pool on the ground. As he turned to go help Gohan, Vegeta and Krillin, he saw a large ship landing nearby. Wo well, Naruto thought feeling the power from whoever had just arrived. D. Goku Krillin groaned out in happiness and also pain. Um, so he's finally arrived, Naruto said as he helped Krillin stand up before he walked over to Gohan. Well well you are pretty tough for a kid, Naruto said with a chuckle as he helped Gohan up. He then turned to the down Vegeta. Why you beat them easily, Vegeta said as he looked at the bodies of Rikum and Birder. 
Hey you hurt my friends you catch a beat down Naruto said pointedly at Vegeta. This is ridiculous. I deserve that kind of power. I am an elite. I deserve to be a super saiyan of legend. And yet this kitsune bastard has shown me up. Vegeta though. Maybe if you trained instead of being a stuck up asshole you could get stronger being from a warrior race doesn't mean shit Naruto said as he held out a hand for Vegeta to take and stand up. Vegeta smacked away the hand before he forced himself on his feet. Well you're durable at least Naruto said. As soon as he said that, a male figure and an orange guy with spiky black hair landed in front of them. Goku. Krillin shouted happy to see his best friend. Despite the pain. Daddy. Gohan yelled happily before wincing from the pain. Hakurit. Vegeta growled angrily. He has two names. Naruto asked Krillin curiously. Long story we'll explain when we're not in agony Krillin said. Should have taken those lessons on healing from Guru Naruto grumbled as Goku approached and hugged Gohan. What happened? I felt you three and three huge power levels with you, but one flew away and two disappeared Goku asked Krillin. Oh, our new friend took out two of them. The third flew away. Krillin said gesturing to Naruto. So your son Goku? Naruto asked as he had heard stories from Bulma, Krillin, and Gohan. He looks like an idiot Karama said flatly. I don't know. I like his dress style Naruto said with a small smile. Of course you would you orange obsessed lunatic Karama grumbled. Goku approached Naruto and looked at him for a moment before he smiled and held out his hand thanks for helping my friends out with the bad guys on this planet. Naruto shook his hand no problem. Anything to piss off Frieza and his cronies Naruto said smirking. Hey Goku you bring any sense of beans. Krillin groaned out. Oh right. Hold on Goku said as he reached into a small pouch and fished out some green beans for Gohan, Krillin, and Vegeta. Vegeta just stood there sensing both their powers. His teeth gritting as he knew both were far stronger than him. Here you go Vegeta I saw that you actually helped my friends with those two and that's why you lost so soon, Goku said with a smile as he tossed Vegeta a senzu bean. Which he caught. Wait, that's why he lost. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Did you really think those two would honestly get the better of the mighty Vegeta? Vegeta asked. No I expected you to lose, but not because you helped them softy Naruto said with a smirk. White fox. Or I will burn your tail. Fox. That's an insult. And if you touch my tail I'll do what I did to the big guy to you. Naruto said as he stomped his still blood covered foot. GRR. Go find a mate or something you rabies filled canine bastard. Vegeta growled. Blah 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 at least I can attract a woman Naruto said, sounding bored as Vegeta ate his bean along with the others. I am legitimately questioning who I hate more on this planet right now. You, Kakarot, Frieza, or Jinyu Vegeta. Hey I didn't blow up planets for fun, so I'm not that bad, Naruto said while Goku nodded in agreement. I'd probably respect you more if you had Vegeta admitted. Oh please, I can already tell you're starting to get used to us being around Naruto said with a smile. I would never willingly team with any of you Vegeta said. Not even against Jinyu and his groupie. Naruto asked as he looked up and saw Jice was here with Jinyu. The FFT. Groupie Krillin said with a chuckle. I don't get it Gohan said tilting his head in confusion. We'll explain when you're how old is he? Naruto asked. Five Goku said simply as he kept his eyes on the enemy. You let a five-year-old fight Naruto yelled. Maybe you're more Saiyan than I thought Kakarot Vegeta said as that was something the Saiyans encouraged. Use the younger members to fight and conquer. So you're the one who killed Gildo Birder and Rackham Jinyu said as he glared at Naruto. I mean you can say I killed them or they committed suicide by challenging me, whatever helps you sleep at night. Or preferably for eternity Naruto said. We should all attack them together we have them outnumbered Krillin said. I'm okay me and Goku will take Captain Moron, you three can have his groupie Naruto said as he could feel that Jinyu was a whole other level compared to the other force members. Oh uh, yeah that sounds great, it's just I have this thing to do Vegeta said before flying off cackling like a lunatic. Damn it you two go after him. Naruto yelled to Gohan and Krillin, knowing Vegeta was making a play for the Dragon Balls. What about you two? Krillin asked. Don't worry, I give this three minutes. Five tops Naruto said giving them a thumbs up before they took off. So I know the fox killed our comrades, but who are you? Jinyu asked Goku. I'm Goku and I'm here to stop you and your boss from hurting this planet and its people anymore, Goku said as he got into his martial arts stance. I need a fighting style, Naruto said with a pout, finding this cool. Plus the Namekian fighting style could only work with him so much due to the lack of stretchy arms. Which one do you want to take on Captain? Jice asked as he powered up. I'll handle the fox. You take on the whatever this thing is Jinyu said pointing at Goku. The you charged it at Naruto who easily sidestepped his attacks, not giving the Jinyu force leader any time to score a hit on him. 
He caught hold of Jin Yu's arm before bending it backwards, causing the purple-horned alien to cry out in pain before, as fist was shoved into his face, spraying blood from his nose and mouth, Nordo followed up with a spin kick across his face, sending him skidding over the ground. Milky Cannon. Jin Yu shouted firing off a blast at Naruto smacked the blast away without any trouble. Nordo appeared in front of Jinyu in the blink of an eye, driving his knee into the stomach several times, causing him to vomit up more blood, he then kicked him in the kneecap breaking his leg. Arg! Jinyu screamed in pain while Naruto looked on with an impassive look. Nordo smirked seeing Jinyu stepping back his body racked with pain, unable to believe what was happening. Him the strongest warrior in the Frieza 4 serving under King Cold himself, was being easily overpowered by some kid. Hey are you gonna try to fight back or just stand there cause it not I'm just gonna leave. Naruto said in a bored tone making Jinyu grind his teeth in anger. Tell you what you get one free hit. Nordo said, holding out his arms. Go on hit me. Or are you too much of it to do anything like your men were? Jinyu growled before he launched himself at Naruto smashing his fist into the boy's chest, but Nordo didn't even budge from the ground he was standing on shocking him as he looked over to Naruto who shook his head. That was just sad. Naruto remarked. Just what in the hell are you? Jinyu growled out in anger at Naruto. Name's Naruto. Or if you'd prefer you can call me your cause of death, Naruto said smirking at the captain. Grrr. Jinyu growled furiously at the fact he was being mocked. Oh what's the matter? Tired of getting your ass kicked? Or do you have a shift at a strip club to work considering your man thong? Naruto continued his mockery. You filthy animal. Jinyu growled as he rushed at Naruto with a punch. It connected to Naruto's face. And did nothing. Uh, I almost felt that one Naruto said with a smirk as Jinyu looked in shock. What? Jinyu exclaimed. Why not check your little scouter and see how much of a difference there is between us, Naruto said with a smirk as he took a fighting stance. Jinyu did exactly that and gained a look of shock 150,000. He exclaimed as Jinyu's power was only 120,000. Well this is me still holding back a little. Which is why power levels are crap, Naruto said with a smirk. You. You. Gah. Jinyu shouted. You gonna keep throwing a tantrum or are we gonna end this? Jinyu glared at Naruto before he started to laugh. Good idea he said before he punched himself in the chest drawing blood. Huh? Look I get you're a masochist, but this seems like an odd time and place to get off the pain, Naruto commented. Ginyu then took a stance and charged some energy over his entire body change now. He yelled as golden light fired from his mouth to hit Naruto. Or it would have had Goku not appeared and shoved Naruto away. Look out. He shouted before getting hit with the beam. The hell Naruto shouted. He was confused why Goku intervened since he was fighting Jais the whole time. Though looking at Jice the force member looked like he had seen better days. Mainly due to the broken nose. Well it's not exactly what I wanted, but this body will do quite nicely. Goku said with an evil smirk as Jice flew beside him. Oh god fucking damn it, Naruto groaned as he now realized what the power Jinyu was gonna use on him was. You can switch bodies. Naruto questioned. Indeed I haven't had to do this for quite a while Jinyu answered in Goku's body. Then why the fuck haven't you just taken Frieza's body? Naruto pointed out. Because Lord Frieza isn't a fool like your dying friend down there Jinyu said, pointing down at the ground where what looked Jinyu was holding his chest in pain. Oh uh, well in that case I'm sure I'll find a way to rip you out of his body as I beat you to near death, Naruto growled. Nothing you do will make me give up this body unless you want to offer up your own Jinyu said. Really? Naruto said with a flat look. I didn't mean that you idiot. Jinyu yelled in a rage. Sure you didn't. Look I get it you're all a gang of planet conquering space strippers. I get it I'm not judging on your sexual preference. Just know I don't swing that way, Naruto said flatly. Ginyu growled at this before his body engulfed itself in a red aura and he shot at Naruto. What the Naruto said before Jinyu slugged him in the gut. Jinyu then smirked as he slammed his fists down on his head, sending Naruto flying to the ground below next to Goku. Of Toa. Interesting. Jinyu could never use the Kaioken in the original timeline. Just Goku's base strength and none of his techniques. Curious she said as she didn't allow that with her own abilities. Toa then observed the fight some more and noticed something. Ah it's only a times two which is probably his limit she said with a nod of understanding. Jinyu could unconsciously access it, but only up to two unlike Goku who can access X10. Back with Naruto. Naruto groaned as he laid on the floor by Goku. How you holding up? Naruto asked the bleeding man. I'll be okay, he only broke the skin Goku groaned out as he held his chest and used some kai to try to stop the bleeding by cauterizing the wound. What the hell did he do? It felt like his power doubled Naruto said. He accessed my Kaioken technique. It's a multiplier that the more you increase the more damage your body will take. Goku answered. Naruto nodded at this and looked at Jinyu who took up with Jis' hole still using the Kaioken. 
I'm gonna assume it's meant to be used in short bursts. Naruto asked as he approached Goku. But at higher levels without training, yes. I can indefinitely use the technique up to X5 if not higher. Goku said. Well that reckless idiot is heading for Frieza's ship, so we better get moving, otherwise he's gonna hurt Krillin and Gohan Naruto said as he shouldered Goku and flew them both towards the ship. Thanks Goku groaned out. Hey you saved me from that guy's trick, so I'll get you your body back. I promise. Naruto said. How? Goku groaned in pain. He's a reckless idiot. Eventually he's gonna realize your body isn't suited for him and want to switch to mine, Naruto explained. Goku then nodded at this that's my opening to take the hit. He asked. Exactly so be ready. His red skin groupie can be dealt with after so stay back until the moment happens, Naruto said. They soon saw a massive ship and felt some powers fighting. Well it seems Frieza is flying elsewhere. And look at that. Idiot is clearly overcompensating with a ship that size Naruto smirked. Huh? Goku asked not getting it. Never mind look Krillin and Gohan are fighting Jinyu Naruto said, pointing to Gohan currently punching Jinyu in the face. Ah. My face. Jinyu shouted. Shut up you body stealing jerk. Gohan yelled as he kicked Jinyu in between the legs. Ay ay. Jinyu shouted in agony. Naruto Krillin and Goku winced at this. Your kid has a mean streak when mad Naruto said with a chuckle at Gohan's willingness to fight dirty. With Frieza. The emperor was currently flying towards some still living Namekians when suddenly. Ay ay. A loud shout of pain was heard by him. What the devil. That sounded like Jinyu oh well I'm sure he's fine. Learn the secret to using the Dragon Balls first, find Jinyu later Frieza said boredly. Back to the fight. Captain. Ah. Jice yelled as Vegeta slugged him in the stomach. Eyes on me I would hate to kill you while you're not paying attention, Vegeta said with a grin. Why you were a weakling when me and Birder fought you Jice groaned out. And thanks to that I am much stronger now, so now I can finally send you to your friends to hell, Vegeta said as he charged a blast in his hand. Filthy Saiyan. Jice yelled before Vegeta blasted him making a massive explosion with incinerated him instantly. Ah, that was satisfying. Now where's Jinyu? Vegeta asked. Meanwhile nearby Jinyu was slowly recovering from Gohan below the belt attack. Hey you good? Naruto asked Jinyu. Jinyu said nothing as he slowly took a stance. I'll do it again if you don't give my dad his body back. Gohan yelled. Please don't Gohan I may not feel it now, but I will when I return to my body if you keep doing that Goku said with a wince. Sorry kid, I got a better body in mind to take change now. Jinyu shouted firing his body change at Naruto. Got you Naruto smirked as he quickly grabbed Goku and threw him into the beam. Damn it. Jinyu growled as he was back in his original body. Oh god the pain. Goku shouted, now back in his body. Gohan eyes widened at this as he frowned at his dad's cries of pain. And that's why we don't do that kid Krillin said with a wince. I don't know it may be funny to watch the prince get his crotch kicked and Naruto joked. Change no Jinyu was yelling before Vegeta struck him in the back sending him down to the ground and slamming into the dirt. You know I'm really looking forward to finally finishing you off Jinyu. Once and for all you worthless excuse for a warrior. Warriors do not pose or skip or dance. Vegeta yelled. I wouldn't monologue he may try your body out next Naruto said. Shut up. Do I look like Zarbon? You're next after I kill this fool. Vegeta yelled as he flew down at Jinyu like a rocket. That's not what I owe for fuck's sake, Naruto growled as he saw Jinyu on the ground with a smirk as his body glowed. Naruto flew towards Jinyu, saw a frog nearby, grabbed it, and threw it into the beam. Ribbit. Ribbit. Jinyu's body now croaked as it hopped away. What the? Vegeta said as he stopped in midair. That's what I meant you idiot Naruto said with a sigh of relief. What's going on? Vegeta yelled clearly frustrated. That idiot has the ability to switch bodies with his opponents Naruto explained. Then why the hell didn't he ever use it on Frieza? Vegeta yelled. He said Frieza wasn't stupid enough to give him the opening for that Naruto explained. Bullcrap he sits in a floating pot every day drinking wine. There were plenty of times he could have done that. Vegeta exclaimed. You can relax and be alert Vegeta Naruto said with a shrug. Oh yeah the alien tyrant that can't sense energy without a scouter couldn't be taken by surprise, Vegeta griped. Wait he's that powerful but doesn't know a basic move like that. Naruto asked in bewilderment. To be fair none of his forces do. I didn't learn it until I left Earth Vegeta said. Naruto we have a problem. Krillin yelled to Naruto. Naruto looked at Krillin and Gohan and saw that Goku was on the floor. Looks like not only did Gohan hit him where no man should be hit but he beat the crap out of him too Naruto said. Oh Gohan said sadly as he didn't mean to go that far. Kid, you need real training with that rage. Also since no one else will say it nice kick Naruto said. We don't have any more senzu beans. How are we gonna heal him? Krillin asked as he let Goku rest on his shoulder. 
The Jedi sighed at this follow me he said as he walked towards the ship. Oh this ought to be interesting Naruto said. Just follow me, mutt. The Jedi yelled over his shoulder as they all entered the ship. I'm a kitsu monkey. Naruto yelled in a rage. You dare use that slur against the Saiyan prince Vegeta roared. Well mud is the same for me. Naruto yelled. He's got you there Vegeta Gohan said with a nod. Quite half-breed. Boldy bring the buffoon over to this pod Vegeta said, gesturing to a medical pod. What's this thing? Naruto asked. It's a healing pod used on soldiers. Unfortunately this is an older model one, so it'll take time to heal him, Vegeta explained. Well it's better than nothing Naruto said. I'm gonna need his help with fighting Frieza so hurry up and toss him in Vegeta. Wow, did hell freeze over. The great prince Vegeta admitting to needing help Naruto smirked. Don't misunderstand this is a temporary alliance. Hopefully Frieza will be gone long enough that Kakarot will heal fully. Vegeta explained. Then we should leave the ship so it doesn't get caught in the crossfire Gohan suggested. It wouldn't anyways. This is Frieza's personal ship. He cares more about it than his forces Vegeta said. Okay so you two can relax and rest up for the fight ahead, Naruto said to Krillin and Gohan as they loaded Goku into the healing pod. If you three are gonna help then here. Vegeta said as he opened a panel revealing some Frieza force armor. Well it's better protection than a guy Krillin admitted. Cool Gohan said with a smile. No thanks not my style Naruto said waving his hand. You sure? Pretty sure you could rock the shoulder pads look Krillin said. Yeah I prefer what I have on Naruto said. Alright well maybe you should bring it to Bulma then. She may be able to make some replica armor from it, Gohan suggested. I'll do that on Earth I don't think she should be here if Frieza is coming back soon, Naruto said. Well you should go check on her. She's been alone for a while, Krillin said. Okay, fine. I'll go check on her, Naruto said after some thought. As Naruto left Krillin's side in relief could he can deal with her anger he said. Krillin, why did you send Naruto off to Bulma? She's most likely mad that we left her alone so long so sending Naruto makes the most sense, Krillin explained. Because she likes him? Gohan asked. Exactly Krillin said with a nod. And this definitely isn't so she won't hit you or for the money she offered if you got her alone with Naruto. Gohan said having heard that whispered conversation after meeting Naruto. I can neither confirm or deny that Krillin admitted. But Naruto. Naruto soon approached the cave they left Bulma at and soon landed on the ground. Bulma. Mori. Naruto called out as he entered the cave and approached the capsule house. The door then burst open. Okay you midget you have a lot of nerve, leaving me alone oh hey Naruto Bulma said, realizing it wasn't Krillin and set down the frying pan in her hand. Where are Mori and the kids? Naruto asked. Oh they left. Something about going to some grand elder Bulma said. Oh good I was worried they were attacked or something, but them going to Guru is probably for the best Naruto breathed a sigh of relief. No I gave them tips on how to avoid people using scouters, Bulma said with a nod. Thanks for that Naruto thanked her. No problem, so why are you here? Bulma asked. Well for now we are waiting for Frieza to come to us, and Krillin said I should check on you, Naruto said as he entered the house along with Bulma. Thank you Krillin. I'll give you two million zini for this instead of one Bulma muttered to herself happily. Naruto saw a fresh pot of ramen on the stove and smiled at the smell. Sit down, we can talk and eat. I wanna know what's going on out there Bulma said with a smile as she led Naruto to a table. Sure thing Bulma Naruto said as he sat down. Hour later. So Goku arrived, but he had his body switched with this Jinyu guy. Bulma asked as she took Naruto's empty bowl. Yeah he's in a healing pod currently recovering from that whole mess Naruto explained. And Gohan in a rage caved in his groin. Bulma asked stifling a laugh. Well he beat up the rest of his body, but yeah that kid has real potential Naruto said with a chuckle. Yeah too bad his mom is so protective Bulma said. Well he is a kid Naruto said with a shrug. Yeah, but so was Goku when he started fighting Bulma said. So you would be okay with your kid fighting? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Good point Bulma said after a moment of thought. Naruto laughed at this this is nice actually talking without you scaring me he said. What not used to girls hitting on you? Bulma asked with a smile. Actually no you're the first to actually be interested in me. Ever. Naruto admitted. You're kidding Bulma said with surprise on her face. No. I'm serious Naruto said. What did your old planet have a thing against foxes? Bulma asked curiously. Naruto paused at this before he sighed kinda it's complicated he said. Wanna talk about it? It not no worries I don't want to pry Bulma amended. She didn't want to seem nosy. Before Naruto could answer he felt a massive amount of power nearby and looked at the exit. Frieza? Bulma asked. Yeah I think he's on the wearing check. Naruto asked Bulma. Go ahead. And Naruto Bulma said getting him to look at her good luck she said before kissing him on the cheek. 
Naruto blushed brightly at this tea thanks he said with a nervous smile as he then ran out of the house. Bulma chuckled at this glad she made some actual progress with Naruto. Who knew being subtle would work? She thought to herself. But Naruto. As Naruto flew towards where he felt Frieza's power he felt it rise even more in a burst. Whoa he thought as he started to sweat. Kid you may want to transform for this guy Karama told him. Yeah with my potential unlocked I may be able to handle a tail or two without going nuts, Naruto thought as he flew. He soon saw the battlefield where Vegeta and Frieza were fighting only Frieza looked slightly different. He was tall. Very tall. And his horns now pointed upwards after a curve from his head. Parts of his armored skin looked more white than his previous form. Currently Frieza was attacking Vegeta who was helpless to stop him as he hit him down into the dirt. Naruto saw that Gohan and Krillin were nearby with Den by some rocks. The hell is Den doing here? He asked as he landed. Before he could get an answer, Frieza turned to look at Naruto and smiled ah the Kitsune boy. I was wondering if you would show up. Frieza said as he was currently crushing Vegeta's skull beneath his foot. Yeah well I'm here so let's do this, Naruto said as he took a stance with his katana ready to fight. Oh how cute. You think you can fight me after I transformed. This form has a power level of 1 million boy Frieza chuckled. And who said you're the only one that can transform? Naruto asked with a smirk as he was then engulfed by a dark orange aura Heiya. Naruto shouted as he powered up. Buff Toa. Yes my pet. This is what I've been waiting to see. Show me your true power. No more holding back against these fools. Show me why I chose you to be my successful project she said with a smirk. Back with Naruto. As Naruto continued to power up a second tail grew next to his first tail. Oh ho so the more powerful you are the more tails you have Frieza said with a smile. You're about to find out. Naruto yelled as he shot forward at Frieza, his katana ready. Frieza used this moment to lift Vegeta up with his foot and toss him directly into Naruto's path. Hoping to have the fox cure the Saiyan prince. Naruto smirked and in an instant Vegeta and Naruto switched places and he swung his katana down, slicing Frieza's tail. What? Frieza shouted as he felt his tail get cut from his body. I think this is a better look for you Naruto said with a smirk. I will mount your head where my tail used to be. Frieza shouted in a rage. Interesting offer, but I'll pass Naruto responded calmly, not intimidated in the slightest by the Galactic Emperor. Frieza flew at Naruto in mock speed, punching the boy across the face, smashing him through nearby plateaus, with Naruto spinning through the air after coming to a halt. Naruto took a stance then charged at Frieza the two fighting across the sky, throwing rapid punches at one another, Naruto hitting dodging and countering each other's blows, Naruto kicked at Frieza who sidestepped his assault, only for Naruto slam his fist into his gut, making his cough up spittle and purple blood as his eyes widened in pain. Storm Rush. Nordo shouted coming out with his ultimate close combat style attack, striking at the tyrant hard and fast as possible, throwing him to the ground so hard that it kicked up a cloud of dust before his feet stomped down on Frieza's chest, causing him to cough up a glob of blood, Naruto smirked seeing the monster in pain. Naruto jumped back as Frieza got up to his feet growling in anger as his eyes twitched at the sight of the young shinobi warrior. You miserable worm. Frieza growled before he gave out a loud roar as his energy exploded around his body as he began to undergo another transformation, cracking the ground underneath him, the force pushing Naruto back a bit as the tyrant began to change his form. Naruto grit his teeth sensing the power start to rise up even higher than before the shaking, soon stopped as the dust cleared away revealing Frieza in his new form. Wow you're even uglier than before. Naruto smirked. Haha, <laughs> we'll see how long that confidence will last you after this. Frieza shouted as he fired off a death beam at Naruto who just barely managed to dodge the incoming attack, shocked at how quickly the speed of the attacks had increased. Frieza laughed sadistically as he unleashed a barrage attack of death beams upon Naruto, forcing the young warrior into a deadly game of avoiding the beams, with several managing to hit and cut Naruto on his shoulder, cheeks, knees, and legs. Okay you asked for this you annoying little bitch. Naruto growled as he went on all fours and released his demonic power with a roar. Red energy bubbled around him as a third tail formed from Naruto's body. Making him even more animalistic. Frieza growled as the more feral looking Naruto was on all fours, glaring at him Frieza huffed heavily glaring at the boy with a mixture of anger and annoyance, since he had arrived he this boy had been nothing but a pest on his life, and like all pests who stood in his way, Frieza would exterminate them. Die. 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 Frieza roared firing off a barrage of attacks on Naruto cheering forward, jumping over a few of the beam shots, as he ran off on all fours towards the Frieza as he did he closed his eyes taking focus forming eight more clones in the three tails cloaks they gathered in energy through their mouths and fired off a stream of energy towards the evil emperor. 
forcing Frisia to dodge by taking into the skies with four of the clones in hot purist after him flying through the air as purple and red blurs clashing against each other throughout the sky, Naruto took a stance and fired off multiple demon bombers. Frieza grit his teeth as he flew across the sky avoiding the bombers, along with the clones he faced, he saw one throwing a burning punch, his direction he gripped him back the wrist, smashing him into another clone, then fired off a frenzy of shots down to the ground, blasting three more clones. He narrowed his eyes, then charged at the one Nordo in close to him punching him across the face, spilling blood down his lip, conforming him to be the real one he swiped down his tail over Naruto's head, knocking him down into the water diving after him. As he flew down towards Naruto however a blast of fire shot from the water, nearly incinerating the emperor as a beam of flames passed by him and also quickly evaporated soak water, leaving Naruto in a large rocky hole in the water as water kept evaporating from the heat he was putting out. The dirty mutt. Frieza growled as he sent a large purple ball at Naruto, hoping to incinerate the feral warrior. However he was hit from behind sending him into a small island what? Frieza roared as she stood up to see an amiki and had kicked him from behind. One wearing a purple guy, white cloak, and white turban on his head. So this is him? The Namekian asked aloud. Oh this must be Piccolo Naruto thought as he jumped from the water landing next to the Namekian warrior. It appears I missed another of you filthy slug people. I'm actually finding this whole situation dull now. Maybe I should just end this now. Frieza growled angrily. Losing his patience with what these cretins had cost him throughout this Namek mission. Nordo froze as Frieza appeared right behind him smashing the back end of his tail into his cheek, knocking him back a good distance, only for him to appear waiting for him to deliver a hard punch to his face smashing him into the dirt. Nordo's forehead leaked blood along with his lip as he struggled to get back up from the force of Frieza's fist, Naruto got to his feet but soon was struck in the chest by Frieza's fist, his eyes widened in pain as he vomited a massive glob of blood littering the grass, Frieza smirked slapping Nordo's side, again crying out in pain. Frieza flew in after Nordo, unleashing thousands of rapid punches on Nordo. Nordo grit his teeth as he laid on the ground his clothes torn and shredded, he tried to stand up breathing heavily as he staggered to his feet looking off at Frieza clenching his fist as he started to gather large amounts of energy. I'm not done yet. Naruto roared. Demonic fire burst. Nordo shouted firing off every ounce of power he had combining his elemental energy into five attacks of fire, wind, water, earth, and lighting toward Frieza, combining into a massive swirling orb, Frieza's eyes widened as the attack came his way engulfing him whole. However a burn third form Frieza emerged from the blast angrily rushing at Naruto before Piccolo flew and intercepted the tyrant. For all the Namekians you've killed, I will end you myself. Piccolo yelled as he punched the third form Frieza in the face. Doing absolutely nothing to the emperor. I'll deal with you first. Frieza growled as he grabbed Piccolo's hand and tore his arm off in his fury. Ah, I must admit I enjoy the screams you all make, even if you can regrow them, Frieza says as he evilly smiled at Piccolo's pain. But his enjoyment was cut short as Naruto kicked him away from the Namekian as he regrew his arm. Stay alert. Naruto growled out. Okay that's it. I've had enough of all of this. Frieza roared angrily you have all been thorns in my side for far too long. The Galactic Emperor growled losing his patience and cost him his immortality, his subordinates, his scouters, everything. They needed to pay in blood for what they cost him. Bring it on you freaky looking overgrown dildo. Naruto growled. This made Krillin pause and hold his mouth as he sput 3 d failing to hold his laughter back. What's a dildo? Gohan asked curiously. You didn't hear that. Don't tell your mother. Krillin yelled in fear. Ray I I I G. Frieza roared as his skin started to form large cracks each glowing with red energy. Naruto froze at this as he felt Frieza's power raising rapidly and getting bigger and bigger. D this is insane, Naruto thought as he started to sweat. We can't compete with this. Piccolo thought as he knew they would die. Finally a challenge. Vegeta grinned as he felt Frieza's power rise. How the hell are you alive? Naruto yelled as he saw that Vegeta was healed and his power multiplied. The little green child over there can heal apparently Vegeta explained. Frieza's eyes moved to look at Dand as he continued his transformation. You fucking moron. Naruto yelled as he instantly flew to Dand just in case. Mr. Piccolo, what should we do? Gohan asked, flying over to his teacher who was still gaping at Frieza's power. He wanted to make sure he wasn't injured after Frieza ripped off his arm after all. Gohan, there's honestly nothing we can do. He's unstoppable. Piccolo said in pure fear he barely scratched Frieza's third form and now he had another one still. It was unbelievable. You may feel like giving up Mr. Negative, but I'm not giving up yet. Naruto growled out. Can't believe I'm agreeing with the canine here, but it ain't over until we're all dead. And since I'm here that won't happen. It's Frieza's time to finally die. Once and for all. 
Vegeta shouted as he powered up and stood next to Naruto, ready to take out Frieza once and for all. And to leave you and I are gonna team up of all things Naruto growled at Vegeta. Hope you can keep up Vegeta said with a grin. I was gonna say the same thing Naruto said with his own grin. Are they actually becoming friends? Krillin asked. Stranger things have happened pet of Naruto Piccolo said as he slowly calmed down. Krillin face planted at this how do you even know about that? Krillin asked. Ugh. Frieza yelled as his body shattered and a bunch of dust kicked up blinding everyone. Before anyone could react though, a beam shot from the dust and was unseen by all. Hitting Dend and causing an explosion. Just passing Naruto and Vegeta both. What? Naruto shouted as he turned around to see Den's exploded corpse. There now you can't heal anymore and cause me any more issues Frieza's voice called as the dust cleared revealing his new form. A mainly white sleek body with purple accents on his shoulders, ankles, chest and head. Naruto growled as his battle aura got bigger you're dead. He roared as he shot at Frieza his claws ready. Before he could even swing down on Frieza the alien emperor slammed his fist in Naruto's gut gag. Naruto wheezed from the ounch. You have been amusing little fox, but I am bored of you now Frieza said as he pointed a finger at Naruto. Not giving up. Naruto growled in pain. I let you in on a little secret this is only 5% of my full power, Frieza said with a cruel smile any last words little fox. You look like a chick Naruto grinned mockingly at the tyrant. Frieza fired his attack at Naruto piercing his chest with a beam invisible to all. Gah. Naruto. Krillin and Gohin shouted in despair watching their friend die. Of Toa. Damn it. I swear they better not screw up in reviving him. I need him for my plans. Toa growled watching this. Later. Naruto woke up and gasped as he shot up from a makeshift grave. Oh god where am I? Is this hell Naruto asked. You're still on Namek you idiot. Kurama yelled at Naruto. Then why is everything on fire? Naruto asked his demon companion. The planet started shaking and the sky became dark. Question it later. Looks like the Dragon Balls are back. Kurama said. So they revived me? Naruto asked out loud as he looked at his hands. You're not the only one Vegeta groaned as he got up and dusted himself off. So how was hell? Naruto asked curiously as he was sent to heaven before being brought back. It had a nice fountain of blood, Vegeta answered as he was there briefly. Before Naruto could respond he felt some massive powers nearby whoa who is that? He questioned. Hell looks like Kakarot and Frieza are almost equal now in power, Vegeta said, sensing their energy as he was more familiar with both of their signatures. Wait, Goku, is that strong? Naruto asked in surprise. Low-class bastard must have done it. He has become the legendary Super Saiyan Vegeta said has started to move a bit. Super what now? Naruto asked cluelessly. Before Vegeta could respond him and Naruto were engulfed in light and disappeared. Earth. But the light cleared and Naruto and Vegeta landed on some grass. Well Vegeta landed on grass Naruto teleported above and hit his head on a tree branch as he fell to the ground. Oh god my head. And I just came back to life. Naruto groaned as he held his head as he got up. Ha 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 ha. Vegeta laughed at Naruto's pain. Joke on a sandpaper cock prince. Naruto groaned before he was tackled into a hug by someone. Alma. Naruto asked recognizing her hair. You dumb asshole. She cried into his chest. Who told her I died? Naruto asked aloud wanting to know who spilled the beans since he promised to come back safely. Um me Gohin said raising his hand. Remind me to tell your mom you're a thug, Naruto said while Gohin paled. Anyways what the hell happened? Last thing I remember was I was about to have a bowl of ramen in heaven and then I'm suddenly back to life Naruto asked. We used the dragon balls of earth to wait your heaven as you eating ramen. Bulma asked. No, I was in a generic multi-person heaven that had free ramen. Some big red demon looking guy with a suit said I'd be there briefly, Naruto said with a shrug, not knowing what he meant at the time. And just when he was about to take his first bite of the heavenly bowl. But just raises further questions. Bulma yelled. Speaking of questions, hey Vegeta, what was the food situation in hell? Naruto asked. There is none Vegeta answered as he sat against the tree Naruto hit earlier. Ha. That's what you get for being a shithead. Naruto said with a laugh. Greetings young Naruto guru said getting Naruto's attention. Gramps you're alive again. Naruto cheered trying to walk over to him. Unfortunately Bulma was literally still hugging and holding him preventing him from moving. Bulma he's alive so let him go Gohin said. No. Bulma shouted. Bulma, come on. Gohin told her. I will tell your mother everything you did on Namek. Bulma shouted. I'm out. Gohin said knowing when to give up. Bulma if you let me go I'll take you on a date. Naruto yelled feeling desperate. Deal. She shouted letting him go thank you for the help Gohin. She said to the five-year-old. Naruto didn't say anything but his eyebrow twitched. Ha. 
outsmarted by a child and a woman. Vegeta laughed. I hope you have a woman after you on this planet. Naruto yelled at Vegeta. Like any earthling is worthy of me Vegeta responded with a smirk. Young Naruto I'm glad you were brought back and that I could talk to you again before I pass on Guru said with a smile as the other Namekians gathered around him. What? Gramps don't joke like that, you'll be fine. Naruto said as he approached the man who gave him a home with his people and helped him learn so much from the Namekians. I am sorry to you young Naruto and to all of my children as well, but my time is at an end. It is almost time for me to finally pass on. But I cough cough have some final words for you all before I eternally sleep, Guru said with a sad smile, as he was clearly fading fast. Don't talk like that Gramps I Naruto was cut off. Naruto let him say his final words, Piccolo said as he stood by him placing a hand on Naruto's shoulder. To Naruto his form transitioned into nail and then back to Piccolo in a blink. But to Naruto his eyes widened and he nodded as tears ran down his eyes looking at Guru. I have lived a long and full life. Watching my children persevere through hardships with pride. The great drought, the space pirates, the cabbage eating space bugs, and this will be no different. You are all strong and powerful in your own ways. Be they martial, mystical, or emotional. Though this is a tragedy of losing our planet you will all rebuild as you are all sons of Namek. It matters not if the planet is gone just that you all I've is enough of a victory. Even if some were unable to be revived he said looking over at the Jedi who smirked you must all move on and you shall be able to under your new guardian. Where he come forth Guru beckoned the elder Namek before transferring his energy to him, I name you the new grand elder of the Namekians, you will lead our people well. I am sure of it. He said with a smile. D thank you Lord Guru. I will uphold your wishes with honor he cried out. And now young Naruto, you have grown into a fine warrior from the day we met. You have embraced our peaceful ways, but also fought to defend every Namekian man and child to your very last breath. Even beyond it in this case. You helped save countless lives in the face of an incredibly powerful threat and never once backed down. I am proud to call you an honorary Namekian and even an honorary son of mine. Even if you don't stay with the Namekians, always remember you will have a place with them. Guru said with a smile to the crying Naruto. Thanks G Gramps Naruto cried out. And now my time has come. I will see you all one day, but hopefully not anytime soon. Guru said as he breathed one last time and vanished before them all. So what are you gonna do now that you're here on earth? Gohin asked Naruto as they all calmed. I have no idea I didn't think that far ahead Naruto admitted. Well you can stay with me at my place everyone else is staying with me, so you can too Bulma said. You have a big enough place. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Naruto her parents are the richest people on the planet Gohin said with a smile. No wonder she's a brat Kurama said with a smile. Quiet you I accept Naruto said to Bulma. But though there may not be enough beds so you and I may have to share Bulma. Don't push it Naruto said flatly. Hardy pooper Bulma said with a mock pout. How are we gonna get everyone there? Naruto asked Bulma. I took care of that already. Should be here in 3 2 1. Bulma said counting down as a large cargo plane appeared. Gohin. A female voice yelled from the big plane that appeared above them and was preparing to land. Oh no, Gohin sighed wondering if he should run. Maybe I was better off dead Piccolo muttered as he had no idea what Kaikai Kai would do to him. He did kidnap her son to train him for a full year and then die, making her son travel to space where he almost got killed. So needless to say Piccolo was internally freaking out from getting beaten by the woman with a frying pan. I told dad not to bring her yet Bulma sighed knowing Kaikai Kai would go overboard being here. Where is my baby? Kai Kai yelled as she jumped out of the plane. Are right here mom Gohin said nervously as his mom ran over. What happened to you? You're dressed as a delinquent. Kai Kai shouted. Actually miss that armor kept him safe Naruto said, hoping to help Gohin put a bit. And you are? Chichi asked. Oh this is Naruto he's a friend we made and he helped me and the others out a lot. Bulma explained. I helped keep this little guy safe, Naruto said with a smile as he rubbed Gohin's head. Nice to meet you now where's your father? I have words for him Kai Kai asked Gohin. Um Gohin said not knowing how to explain this one. Currently in a deep match against an evil emperor on an exploding planet, Bulma deadpanned. Of course he is Kai Kai side I'll deal with him later then. In the meantime young man let's get you home. You have a lot of studying to do Kai Kai said to Gohin as she put him on the plane. Later Gohin I'll be sure to visit you Naruto said. Well that went better than when Krillin went to their house to explain Goku's death Bulma. He died before this. Naruto asked curiously. Yup Bulma answered nonchalantly. Huh, by the way where's Krillin? Naruto asked. Frieza killed him and he was revived with the Dragon Balls before, so he can't be brought back, Piccolo said as they all got on the plane. Couldn't you just use the Namekian Dragon Balls to revive him then? Naruto asked pointing to the giant balls being loaded into the plane. 
Wait, their Dragon Balls can revive people multiple times? Bulma asked. Yeah they can't multi-resurrect, but can revive someone as many times as possible Den said. You would think they could power up their Dragon Balls to do both just in case Naruto said with a sigh. It's based off the strength of their creator Den explained. Can't you just make it so you only have two wishes in exchange for being able to revive multiple people? Naruto asked. This caused the Namekians to go silent, it would still mean you most likely can't resurrect someone multiple times unless the creator or guardian is incredibly powerful. Murray explained. I'm sure given the time you could figure it out, Gramps Naruto said with an encouraging smile. Are you just gonna call every Grand Elder Gramps? Piccolo asked baffled. Shut up Nail Naruto responded. I'm not Nail Piccolo said. Reee Naruto answered smirking. Briefs compound. So this is your new friend. Dr. Briefs asked his daughter as he and his wife were being introduced to Naruto. Yup. I'm just gonna leave you three alone to get acquainted, Bulma said as she left the room to check on the Namekians in the compound. Does that happen often? Naruto asked them curiously. Not really the last guy she brought home was Yamcha. And he wasn't as cute as you Panchi said with a smile at Naruto. Oh yay the asshole that cheated because he got famous Naruto said with a nod. Ah yes I remember that. Bulma took my flying car and my gun and hunted him for a week Dr. Brees reminisced. Naruto laughed at this finding this funny. Ah I wish I had seen that. Naruto grinned. I have the footage wanna see it. Dr. Brees asked with a smile. Oh yeah I need to watch this Naruto said. Later. How are things Goyo for crying out loud? Bulma yelled seeing her dad and Naruto watching TV. Okay this is the part where Bulma kicked him so hard he spoke like an opera performer for a month, Panchi told Naruto while she served him a drink. Here it comes and Dr. Brief said with a smile. They then heard a cracking sound and a high-pitched squeal. Oh ho. Nice. Naruto said as he laughed at Yamcha's deserved misery. Hey Bulma how's it going oh come on a telepathic voice asked in her head, one she recognized as Yamcha when he. Yamcha I explained this already we are done we can be friends, but that's it Bulma said with a sigh. Not that why are you watching that video he asked. Oh dad was showing my new prey I mean my new friend Naruto the video Bulma responded. You trying to show him what happens if he's dumb enough to cheat like this guy? A male voice asked. Boy. Yamaha yelled. Hey Tien Bulma said I'm surprised King Kai is letting you all speak to me she said. Oh he's passed out currently. Gregory accidentally hit him with a mallet a younger male voice said. Hey Chaitsu. Good news we have a way to revive you and Krillin so stay put Bulma said. As she always talked to herself. Naruto whispered to Dr. Briefs. This is new. Be prepared for anything she may do. Don't let her access any of your holes Dr. Briefs whispered back. Naruto paled at this while he held Kurama's sword hearing the fox's laughter. I like this family. Kurama yelled as Naruto groaned and slapped his face. Don't tease him dear I'm sure he'll be fine, but just in case here, Panchi said as she handed Naruto something quickly, Naruto looked and saw it was a multi-pack of condoms. <laughs> Kurama's laughter echoed louder in Naruto's mind. Earth one week after planet Namek's destruction. The Namekians, their Dragon Balls, Vegeta and Naruto, had all been moved to Capsule Corporation rather swiftly by Bulma. They had found out that the Dragon Balls would be unusable until they recharged for 130 days or one Namekian year. So far Naruto was just relaxing at Capsule Corporation. He had been enjoying his time on Earth. The food was great, he was able to eat something not cabbage for the first time in a while. Damn it woman. I said I wanted that gravity room better than what Kakarot had. Vegeta's angry voice shouted. Though he could do without having to room with Vegeta. His options were bunk with Bulma or bunk with Vegeta. He chose Vegeta and was instantly regretting it. Would it really be that bad to bunk with her? He was currently thinking as he tried to enjoy his sandwich weighing his options. And I told you my dad is working on it, you uptight asshole. Bulma's voice shouted back. Sigh. This is gonna be a long four months. Naruto sighed in resignation at being the one who will most likely break up this argument. Again. Naruto got up from the table and exited to see Bulma and Vegeta glaring at each other. Okay I have had enough of you two fighting while I try to eat. First it was the argument while I was eating ramen, then the pork stir fry argument, then the second ramen argument, and the third, and you know what not the point. What the hell is with you two? He asked, annoyed at the constant arguing. He's the one with a bad attitude. Always wanting to train and yelling at us to get his ship ready. Bulma yelled. And if you all had the semblance of quality I'm used to I wouldn't need to pester you worthless fools. The Jetta yelled. Quality? You're living in a rich family's house for free. Naruto yelled. I meant about the products Fox. Although I'll say this is the third nicest home I've been to Vegeta admitted. Okay look if you want to train I'll tell you what I'll spar with you and if I win you have to calm the hell down and try to relax more Naruto suggested. 
Fine but when I win you not only have to get your woman in gear to have my ship ready, but you also must not eat that soup you seem to love for the duration of my stay. No way. I will never bet Raymond. Naruto yelled. Okay you don't want to give that up. Fine. Then you have to share it with me. I'm curious on the taste. Vegeta said. That's fine. Naruto said with a nod. Careful Naruto Saiyans eat a lot Bulma warned. Well, so do I. Who do you think ate your chocolate stash? Naruto said nonchalantly. You did what Bulma yelled I owe you an apology Vegeta Bulma said without turning her glare from Naruto. She was sure the prince ate it. I'll make it up to you not that. Naruto yelled. A date. You and me. A romantic candlelight dinner. Uh. Sure I have no problem with that Naruto said with a nod. Careful woman that's his first date, Vegeta said with a hidden smirk. You sell out. Naruto yelled regretting telling Vegeta that. I already know, Bulma said boredly to the two. Alright let's do this bar. I want to see if you can keep up with me when you're not holding back Vegeta said. Lead the way your majesty Naruto smirked. The three went outside Capsule Corporation into the front yard. This will be a fight worthy of my Saiyan blood. Aside from Kakarot and myself, you're the strongest on this planet. Vegeta said as he took a stance. Huh? Gohin is pretty strong, I recall he had to make Frieza try in his second form, Naruto said as he took his own stance. He has potential I'll admit. However it's only through fierce rage that power comes out. He'd be a worthy warrior if he let it fully out, Vegeta said taking his stance. Well he's a gentle soul, but I bet if I trained with him a bit, I could get him to Super Saiyan like his dad, Naruto said with a smirk as he baited Vegeta. Ah if anyone will become a Super Saiyan like Kakarot it will be me. Not his half-blooded son. Vegeta roared and dashed at Naruto. Sucker Naruto thought before he moved to the side and charged a Rasengan in his hand before jamming it into Vegeta's chest. But the Vegeta shouted as he was sent spinning and flying into the picket fence. Hey. No hurting the house. Bulma yelled. Sorry Bulma. I'll repair it if you want Naruto said sheepishly. Due dates. Bulma yelled as the damage was minimal and could be fixed in an hour at most. Rah. Vegeta roared as he stood up. You bastard. He growled. Oh relax it's just a spar think of it as a chance to get stronger by fighting a tricky opponent Naruto said. The RRR Vegeta growled before taking a breath fine. He breathed out before disappearing and reappearing in front of Naruto and uppercutting him. Sending him flying upwards. Men Bulma said with a sigh as they started to fight in the sky. Exchanging punches only to block or dodge each punch sent in a series of fast movements. Oh like you're not watching this to see if Naruto gets his shirt ripped off, Panchi said as she walked past her daughter with a mug of beer to bring to her husband. Fru Bulma said with a smile. Maybe if you were a little more subtle Naruto would take your attempts to start a relationship seriously. He seems like a kind boy and not a horn dog like Yamcha. Panchi said. Maybe you're right Bulma said getting a smile from her mother, or maybe I need even more sex appeal, Bulma grumbled. Oh you're plenty attractive dear. Naruto is just not used to you being so forward, Dr. Brief said as he came outside. He talks to you? Bulma asked with a raised eyebrow. Both of us Panchi answered his exact words where she's attractive but very forward. If she toned it down I'd definitely try for a relationship Panchi said. Bulma smiled at this he likes me. She said with a squeal of excitement. And we've lost her Dr. Brief sweat dropped as suddenly Vegeta came crashing down to the dirt. Ha! I win. Naruto said with a laugh as he dropped down. You got lucky. Next time I will win. Vegeta yelled from the ground. Oh Vegeta I wanted to say that the ship will be ready for you soon, but I can't finish it until after this weekend. My other daughter is finally visiting Dr. Brief said. Tights is coming to visit. Bulma asked. You have a sister and she's named Tights. Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow at the name. Hush Bulma said. That's fine doctor I can wait. Vegeta said still on the ground. You're not screaming in rage. Bulma asked confused. I made a bet with your mate so I will adhere to it. As the prince of Saiyans my word is my bond. Vegeta said. Yup try to relax maybe tights is your type Naruto said. You just don't potentially want to deal with two of her don't you? Vegeta asked gesturing towards Bulma. Nah I just figured you would like to find someone Naruto said. She probably would want to meet both of you. She's a science fiction book writer so you two being aliens will probably have some stories for inspiration. Mainly Vegeta Bulma said. Yeah I have been to a total of three planets, well Vegeta has more under his belt, Naruto said with a nod of agreement. I did destroy many planets, Vegeta said as he had stepped foot on many of them that he destroyed. Like Arlia. God he hated Arlia. Anyways I'd love to talk more about this, but I have plans tonight now with Naruto and have to get ready, Bulma said as she skipped happily off. Should I be concerned? Naruto asked Dr. Briefs, Panchi, and Vegeta. Probably not. I told her to pull back a bit Dr. Briefs said. 
Still, bring a helmet pan she said with a smile. And don't let her access any holes Vegeta said, still embedded in the ground. No more Earth comedy for you, Naruto said as he walked off grumbling. Earth comedy? I was referring to an old freeze of Force members last date. Vegeta said as he got up. Zarbon? Naruto asked with a flat look. Vegeta nodded at this. Naruto said nothing before he laughed knew what he said. Everyone did. We were taking bets on the guy's name. Pretty sure Frieza was closest to learning it, but we never did find out before Kakarot wasted him. Vegeta said. So what's your plan for your date dear? Panchi asked Naruto. Olma said a fancy restaurant with candles. Naruto said. Oh do you have a tuxedo? Panchi asked. I can loan you old one of mine Dr. Brief said. Thanks doctor but I don't think it'll fit me, Naruto said as they were two very differing heights. My boy I wasn't always an old man, plus I can have it tailored if needed. Follow me Dr. Brief said. Do you have any extras? Vegeta asked, getting everyone's attention I saw one on the picture screen the other day. It looked kind of like a good style of clothing Vegeta admitted. He liked the style okay. At least for non-armored clothing. Later. Naruto was in the living room waiting for Bulma in a black tuxedo. Sorry to keep you waiting Naruto Bulma's voice sounded as he turned to her coming down a flight of stairs as his jaw dropped. She was wearing a burnt orange strapless dress with a slit in the side of the leg, along with matching high heels and purse. Wow. You clean up great Naruto Bulma said looking him over. Yeah your mom said to go all out when I go out with you, Naruto said with a chuckle as he regained his composure after seeing Bulma's dress. Well she was right. You look amazing she said. So do you Naruto said without thinking. Bulma grinned happily at that. We should go, I have a limo out front to take us to the restaurant for our reservation, Bulma said as she had spent a lot of today renting out a restaurant for this date, along with getting herself ready. She was part of the richest family on earth, so she had easy ways to get reservations. Wow. I can't wait to see this place Naruto said, impressed by how all out she was going. Bulma smiled at this before she and Naruto exited the building and got into the limo. To Golden Way please Bulma told her driver as the limo started to hover and drive to said restaurant. Later at the restaurant. Naruto and Bulma were outside sitting at a table on a balcony with candles lit throughout the balcony. Illuminating the area. Right now Bulma was telling him about her first adventure with Goku. So you hit him with your car and shot him in the face? Naruto asked chuckling. Yup that's how I met Goku. Bulma said as she was recounting every detail of her previous adventures with Goku when he was a boy. That is amazing. I can't believe how much you traveled and what you faced when you were 14. Naruto said with a smile. Bulma smiled before frowning say Naruto, remember on Namak when we were talking before you went to face Frieza? She asked the foxy alien. Yeah I remember Naruto said as he had an inkling he knew what she was gonna ask and mentally steeled himself. I had asked about what your life was like on your planet for you. I didn't want to pry and you left to face Frieza before I got any answers, but I would like to know. After you died I was upset and now I want to know in case something happens again, Bulma said with her frown and a pleading look in her eyes. Bulma it's okay. I'll tell you Naruto said as he had planned to originally tell her then at the time. But planning to and doing it are two different things. It all started the day I was born Naruto started to explain every detail of his life he could. From the day his parents died to when he appeared on Namek. Including the pain and suffering he went through as a child. One explanation later. And that's the last thing I remember from my planet before I suddenly woke up on Namek Naruto finished. Bulma looked at Naruto and gripped her glass as she grit her teeth Naruto, your home was a shithole she said angrily trying to hold back her fury. But Naruto was cut off. No. No buts. They treated you as a child like a monster for simply existing. You sacrificed so much for that hellhole. And they only treated you like a human after you saved them from pain. That is utter bullshit. You saved them multiple times beforehand. She growled. Okay calm down Bulma, it's okay. I've gotten over it Naruto said trying to placate her. Bulma took a breath and downed her glass of wine to calm herself. Okay I won't say anything for right now, but you and I will be discussing this another time. Make no mistake about that Bulma said seriously. She wasn't gonna drop this instantly. No way in hell. Naruto chuckled at this I like it when you're fiery he said. Bulma blushed and grinned happily at this while making a mental note to express her fire more often around Naruto. Oh can you tell me anything about Piccolo? I want to learn of his time on earth since I stayed with Namekians and wanted to know what his experience was like Naruto asked Bulma to change the subject. The two continued to chat and talk the night away on this date. Weeks later. Naruto was flying towards Mount Peozu to the home of Goku, Gohin, and Kai Kai. He was flying there to gather them for the revival of Goku and Krillin with the newly recharged Dragon Balls. Now where is that house? He asked himself. 
He had gone himself rather than having Bulma call Kai Kai, as he wished to get some fresh air, as well as get more familiar with other locations aside from the city. And also so he stayed out of Vegeta's way while he was training. Break a gravity chamber one time and suddenly Vegeta hates you. It was an accident damn it. That and Vegeta was mad at him for messing with him and tights who acted moved into the city. Apparently Vegeta no longer stayed in the same room as him in Capsule Corporation. Because apparently tights moved him into her bedroom. She claims so she has inspiration nearby for her novels and that he was staying on a couch in there. Naruto chuckled at the memory of when Vegeta met tights. They were fighting worse than normally during a spar and Vegeta was sent to the ground by Naruto and he ended up skipping from the ground like a stone. And right into tights. Not hard enough for anything damaging to either of them. Though he did find it funny that Vegeta hit him harder when he thought he hurt tights when he crashed into her. Or it was angered embarrassment when Vegeta's head landed in her chest. Either way a fun day regardless. Anyways Naruto landed at the house of the Sun family. Naruto landed at the front door which soon burst open as what looked like an older man was suddenly sent flying through it. Naruto instantly jumped to the side as the man passed him and smashed into a tree. And stay out. Kai Kai was heard shouting as she went to the door. You can't treat me like this. Just cause your worthless husband abandoned both of you. The man shouted. Hey Chichi, do you want me to rip out this idiot's heart? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Chichi then growled as she pulled out a kitchen knife. No Naruto I have it. Gohan is inside. Please feel free to stay for lunch. Dot. I'll need your help hiding the body she said as she rushed past him screaming a war cry as she charged the idiotic older man. I better ask Gohan what the hell is going on Naruto said as he paused for a moment to watch this scene. Later. Naruto was now inside the sun house sitting at a table as Kai Kai served Gohan and Naruto some food. So what brings you here? Kai Kai asked. Bulma wanted me to get you too, so we can revive Goku and Krillin with the Dragon Balls, since they're ready. Naruto answered as he ate a sandwich. Oh has it been three months already? Kai Kai asked with a smile as she sat down at the table. Yeah it's been a busy few months, but we figured Gohan should be able to train with his dad when he's revived. Naruto said as Kai Kai glared at him. Now hold on let me at least explain before you bite my head off Naruto said holding up his hands. Kai Kai glared at Naruto for a moment before she nodded, since she knew Naruto at least had some brains, so his opinion was somewhat valid. Mainly cause he wasn't a former villain, a pervert, or a combination of the two. Okay look I have met a lot of strong people, and you know what the best ones had in common? Naruto asked Kai Kai and Gohan. Gohan shrugged at this showing he didn't know, while Kai Kai said nothing. They were both strong and smart. Heck one of the people I saw as a grandfather was known as the professor to his enemies due to his knowledge Naruto started to say. Wait they have fighters that are actually that smart? Kai Kai asked with an inquiring look. My world was constantly in wars throughout time. We needed brains as well as brawn Naruto explained. How smart could a world of war be? Kai Kai scoffed. My botch Ann was a doctor and could punch a mountain to dust with one punch. My mother was a renowned warrior that struck terror into her enemies with a look and was in the running to become village leader along with my father. Naruto answered by recalling Tsunade and the things he learned of his mother from Kurama. Kai Kai eyes widened at this as she knew Naruto wasn't a liar, so you feel Gohan could do both and have a decent balance? She asked. Yes, but I could also just teach him my clone technique. Everything they learn he learns Naruto said. Sold. If you teach him that then Gohan can train as much as he wants, as long as he leaves clones to study Kai Kai said with a bright smile. Deal. Alright Gohan, after we revive your dad and Krillin, I'll teach you to use shadow clones, Naruto told the boy, as he knew what Gohan did with his power was his choice, but that he deserves an actual choice. Gohan nodded at this why do you want to help me get stronger? He asked curiously. Naruto chuckled at this well I have a small bet with Vegeta that if I train with you, I can get you to become a super saiyan before him he said. That's it. Gohan asked with a sweat drop. I bet if you make it before him that he has to be nice to Bulma for three months Naruto said. Oh geez what did he ask for your side of the bet Gohan asked. I give up Raymond for a year so you better train hard, Naruto said with a grin. I feel very scared at the moment Gohan admitted. There was another reason. Naruto started to say getting both Gohan and Kai Kai's attention. I can see that you're being pulled in two different directions. You don't like to fight but wish to protect others. You don't mind learning and studying but also wish to still train your body. I can honestly say that if this continued you would probably struggle with what direction to go. I want to give you a choice at least. So that you can choose your own path. Naruto told Gohan. Gohan smiled at this before he nodded at Naruto, so how we gonna get to Capsule Corporation? He asked. Don't worry Bulma gave me a capsule for flying you there and your mom and your dad too Kai Kai Naruto said. You learned to drive? Kai Kai asked. Yeah Bulma is a good teacher. 
Naruto said with a smile. So you too official yet? Kai Kai asked with a smile. Naruto blushed at this but slowly nodded. Yes I win the pool. Kai Kai shouted happily as her eyes became zeny signs. There was a pool. Naruto asked with a deadpan tone. Yup me, daddy, Dr. Briefs, Panchi, and Rashi all had a pool going to see when you two would get together, and I just won. Kai Kai cheered happily. Lad I could help with your bills Naruto said as he sighed. I can now buy bulk meat for Goku when he's revived. Kai Kai shouted. Better have a freezer the size of a army base Naruto said with a chuckle. You make it sound like there'd be any left, Gohin said as his father and himself ate a lot. Naruto laughed at this as he nodded okay let's head back to Capsule Corporation before Bulma calls me, Naruto said as he opened the door for the two and pulled out the capsule containing the hover car before opening it. Revealing a black hover car decorated with orange lightning bolts. Later. Naruto parked his hover car in front of Capsule Corporation after having picked up Kai Kai, Gohin, and stopping to get Ox King as well. You're late. Bulma yelled as she came out to greet them. Sorry we had a little issue to deal with Naruto said in regards to Gohin's former tutor. Ah so did you convince her to let you train Gohin or did you meet her frying pan? Bulma asked with a smile. I offered to teach him my clone technique and she agreed Naruto said. That's my man negotiating and avoiding pain, Bulma said with a smile as she hugged Naruto's arm. Oh you two are so cute. And that reminds me you all owe me money. Kai Kai shouted at Rashi, Panchi, Dr. Briefs and her father. How much do we owe? Panchi asked not able to remember the agreed upon amount. I'm glad they're together but one more week and I would have won Dr. Brief's side. True love doesn't wait for bets, Gramps Naruto said with a smile as he held Bulma's hand. You do realize I'll be your father-in-law when you inevitably get together right? Dr. Brief's deadpan. I say Gramps with love and you know that Naruto. Yay he could be Vegeta and sleep with tights after an argument Bulma said as she rolled her eyes. Can we not bring that up Dr. Brief sulked. Yeah we all lost money on that bet Rashi said. Except for me Naruto smirked as he did bet when those two would get together. And won 100,000 zini from it. Okay let's do this we have friends to revive, Bulma said as the group gathered around the dragon balls with an Amikians. Is it smart to summon the dragon in broad daylight in the middle of a city? Gohin asked, but before he got an answer Den summoned Purunga and the sky darkened. Wow so that's Purunga Naruto asked as he looked up at the dragon, ignoring the screams of panic in the city. Seriously, why did we do this in the middle of the city? Gohin asked as he was really concerned how no one else was coming to that same conclusion. They are used to crazy stuff happening at Capsule Corporation Kid Naruto said with a chuckle. Case in point Vegeta blowing up the roof Naruto gestured to a giant hole in the roof being repaired. I am the dragon Purunga and I will grant you three wishes. Okay Dan wish one is sending Goku and Krillin to Earth's check-in station so we can bring M here, Piccolo said, knowing that if they didn't bring them there, they'd revive in space and suffocate. We will see the souls of Goku and Krillin to the Earth's check-in station from the afterlife, Den said in Namikian. I cannot fulfill this wish fully Purunga said. What? Naruto asked confused why the all-powerful dragon couldn't do this simple wish. I can move the one called Krillin easily, but the one called Goku is not dead, so I can't move him to the check-in station Purunga said. He's alive Kai Kai shouted. How the? Naruto shouted as well. Damn it Kakarot. You can't even die correctly. Vegeta shouted. Okay let's just move Krillin then Piccolo said to Dan who nodded and repeated this to Paranga. Very well it's been done, the one called Krillin is now at the earth check-in station. What is your next wish? Paranga asked. Next we revive Krillin Piccolo said after that let's bring Goku here and we'll wait four months to revive the others, Piccolo said. One translation from Dan and Krillin appeared in front of them all. Oh. Oh I'm alive now. Oh thank Kami. Krillin said happily as he got his bearings. I'm sorry but I can't bring Goku here since he said not to do it, Paranga said. What? Kai Kai yelled. Bullshit. Vegeta shouted angrily. Well I don't blame him. He may be a super saiyan now, but even he can't defeat his wife Rashi said before having a frying pan thrown at him. Where'd she keep that? Naruto asked confused. Well I suppose we could revive one of our friends instead, Bulma said. Buri walked over to Naruto to say something. What's up Gramps? Naruto asked. We powered up the Dragon Balls while staying here, so you can revive multiple people at once, so please feel free to being back all of your friends at once. We can wait another Namikian year before finding a new world, Murray said to Bulma. Bulma smiled at this before she nodded we wish back those who were killed by the Saiyans Vegeta and Nappa she said. Then nodded before he told Paranga the wish. I would hide buddy Naruto said to Vegeta. I will not hide from weaklings and since when are we buddies? Vegeta asked. Since you started sticking it to my girlfriend's sister. Brother-in-law Naruto said with a smirk. 
This is punishment for all the innocents I slaughtered, isn't it? Vegeta asked to the sky. Hey you could do worse for a brother Bulma said. I suppose it's better than Kakarot or Raditz Vegeta admitted. Soon Yamcha, Tian, and Chiatsu appeared in front of them. Alright I'm back oof. Yamcha was saying until Naruto kicked him in the gut. Naruto Bulma shouted. What? I said I'd kick him when he was revived. He cheated on you honey Naruto defended himself. Yeah but I was gonna kick him. With heels Bulma said. Vegeta meanwhile was just laughing his ass off watching this. So you're Naruto? Yamcha groaned from the ground. Yup nice to meet you playboy Naruto smirked. I deserved that Yamcha groaned. Well at least you admitted. I'll tell you what you be decent to me and I'll be decent to you. Sound fair? Naruto asked as he didn't want to make a new enemy. I say kick him again. Vegeta shouted after hearing that. He liked seeing weaklings in pain after all. So I see Vegeta's on earth now Tian said, glaring at the Saiyan who had his partner slaughter them. That a problem Triclops. Vegeta asked with his own glare. Vegeta you said you would play nice Naruto said. I said I'd play nice with you woman. I never said anything about these peons Vegeta responded. Look as long as it's only verbal it's cool. The second you guys start throwing fists I'll knock you out Naruto told them. Why? You have literally no stakes if they fight Chiatsu pointed out. Bulma made me head of security for Capsule Corporation. Naruto explained. WND why should I listen to you? Vegeta asked. If you don't I'll tell tights and she can make you stop Naruto said while well, Vegeta paled. I like not having things inserted so message received he said still paling. I so didn't need to hear that Bulma said shuddering. Inserted. Gohin asked. We'll explain it when you're older or never. Krillin said quickly. Your wishes have been granted. Farewell. Paranga said as he started to recede back into the Dragon Balls. See you in four months. Naruto shouted to the dragon as it disappeared. Well not that this hasn't been fun, but I have things to do Vegeta said as he started walking away. Oh come on Vegeta we have a big meal planned, and Tite said if you don't show up then she's the man tonight, Naruto said with a smirk. I will join and take care of my plans tomorrow a paling Vegeta stated. Let's get this feast on the way then. Especially since we don't need to feed Goku Bulma said, knowing he would eat his own feast by himself. Or 15 feasts. Depending on the day. There was much feasting done that day. The next day. Naruto awoke from the floor of the dining hall. The feast was a large success until everyone all passed out from food comas. Except for Vegeta. He was dragged off by tights as the feast was winding down. The dining hall had several Namekians strewn about. Rashi was sleeping half embedded into a wall. Yamcha was upside down stuck to the chandelier. What the hell was in that food? Naruto groaned. I don't know. Ow but wow what a party Naruto looked to see Bulma cuddling into his side. His arm wedged between her breasts. Bulma? Naruto asked with a blush. Relax, we didn't do anything. Although I suspect the chefs accidentally put my dad's sleeping medication in all the food again, Bulma said. You need better chefs honey Naruto said with a sigh. Nah they're usually good. Chances are it was one playing a little prank, but without realizing how many would be at this party. Bulma waved it off. If you say so Naruto shrugged before trying to get up, but found himself unable to get up due to Bulma still latching on to him. Bulma, I need to get up Naruto said to his girlfriend. No you don't Bulma said. Babe I wanted to go training with Gohin a bit Naruto said. Yeah I don't see that happening, Bulma said as she pointed at Gohin, who was currently passed out on the table. What the hell happened in here? Vegeta asked as he entered the room getting Naruto and Bulma's attention. Why are you missing a shirt? Naruto asked the Saiyan prince. Vegeta said nothing as he turned to Bulma I saw that my ship is ready, so I'll be leaving soon he said. Leaving? Bulma and Naruto asked confused. I need to go find Kakarot. I refuse to sit here and let that fool get stronger in space. Vegeta explained. Geez you have such a hate boner for the guy Naruto rolled his eyes. Whatever. You want to come with me? I could use a sparring partner Vegeta asked Naruto. Hmm. Naruto took a moment to think on this. With Toa. He better not leave Earth yet. I can't allow him to get too strong too fast Toa said, looking at her crystal ball. If he left for space it could ruin her plans. Especially if he encountered evidence of Bu or Beerus before he's ready. It could unravel all her machinations. Back with Naruto. I'm gonna have to pass Vegeta. I promise to train Gohan. Plus I want to try training the others and make them stronger. Naruto answered. The hem Bulma coughed out. And also I can't leave my girlfriend while gallivanting in space Naruto answered quickly. Fah. Letting a woman control you Vegeta shook his head. What's this I hear about you leaving Earth? Tights yelled from another room. Oh look at the time. I have to go. Vegeta said running the hell out. He will be back Naruto said with a smile and a chuckle. What makes you think that? Bulma said. 
He has no allies off Earth, plus I think we are growing on him, Naruto said. And also cause tights will hunt him through space, Bulma said. The Asaiyans tend to like women like that I suppose, Naruto shrugged. That explains so much, Bulma said aloud. Well since they others won't be up for a while how about me and you go out for breakfast? Naruto asked as he finally got up. Sounds great. Let's go, Bulma said excited. But Toa. Oh thank goodness that woman is keeping him on earth, Toa said with a relieved sigh before chuckling, when my pet is ready to help me with my plans, I'll let him keep her around, she giggled. A few days later. Out in the wilderness where Gohan was trained by Piccolo, said Namekian was meditating on a rock. Hey Nail. Naruto's voice greeted as he landed next to the Namekian. I'm Piccolo. When Nail fused with me I was the dominant personality Piccolo said still meditating. Oh I know. It's just fun to call you Nail Naruto said with a smirk. What brings you here Naruto? Piccolo asked sounding amused. I asked Gohan, Yamcha, Krillin, Tian and Shiatsu to meet me here, Naruto explained. Great, now I need to find a new wasteland to train in. That's the fifth one this week. Piccolo groaned irritated. Do you know how hard it is to find wastelands that suit my needs? He asked. Oh relax see I wanted to have us all train together and try to get stronger together, Naruto said to the Namekian warrior. Do you think you can make humans stronger? Piccolo asked with a raised eyebrow. Absolutely. Anyone can become stronger if they put in the effort. Naruto answered determinedly. Now this I have to see Piccolo said as he stopped his meditation. Soon Gohan arrived along with the others. Hey what's up Naruto? I have a date tonight that I need to get ready for Krillin asked. Really? Well I'm happy for you. Don't screw it up, Naruto chuckled out to the bald monk. Oh come on. Krillin groaned. I'm sure you'll be fine Krillin. Just don't pull a Yamcha Chiatsu said with a grin. Really Yamcha groaned. You had that coming Tian said to Yamcha. Well anyway I called you all here because I wanted to ask you all if you wish to get stronger. I want to help you guys reach heights beyond even Frieza Naruto told them. You think you can get us as strong as Frieza? Krillin asked surprised. Well maybe first form, see what I want to do is have you guys learn tactics and techniques that can even the odds against a strong opponent as well as getting your power up. Naruto explained. And you think you can absolutely do this? Yamcha asked. Yes. Without question. Strength is more than power, and we can't always rely on Goku. With hard work and training we can absolutely get stronger, Naruto said determinedly. Well since you taught me that shadow clone move I'm free to train, so I'm willing to try Gohan said. He taught you that? Krillin asked the half Saiyan child. Only way I could get Kai Kai to agree Naruto said. Can you teach me? I need it for reasons Yamcha asked. You're lucky there's a child here or I'd be swearing up a storm at you, Naruto deadpanned as he took out a capsule and threw it making what looked like weighted bands appear and land on Yamcha for the comment. Hey. Get these off of me. Yamcha yelled. We have weighted clothes Piccolo said. Not like these, think of them as gravity bands. You use your energy to increase and decrease the gravity surrounding Yam. You made these? Tien asked with a surprised look. Well with Bulma's help of course. I'm not sure where the idea for the seal came from though he admitted. Well let's get started then don't want Vegeta to get too ahead of us Piccolo said. Oh he won't, he's in space looking for Goku. He left before I made these. Yeah, but didn't he make Bulma's dad add a gravity chamber to his ship? Krillin asked. Yes, but it only goes up to 150 times Earth's gravity Naruto responded now put on the bands everyone Naruto said as he grabbed a pair for him to wear as well it's not fair if I sit on the sidelines. What you guys train and I'll also do with you. No matter how crazy it can become he said. But Toa. I knew implanting that idea in his head would pay off Toa giggled happily before the door to her hideout was suddenly blown up. What the? Toa shouted as she grabbed her spear to fight whoever was attacking her. It's been a long time creator a male voice sounded as a figure stepped through the smoke of the explosion. Mira Toa said with a scowl. Surprised to see me? He asked monotonely. Considering you died after absorbing me, yes. Toa said fiercely. Yes, your new experiment had a few unintended butterfly effects. Such as my revival Mira explained before charging up an energy blast, and now I will continue my own plans and absorb you again. Reaching my full power once more, Mira said as he sent the blast to Toa who vanished and dodged it. Damn it. I can't beat Mira on my own. Not like this. Toa thought hitting behind a wall. You cannot hide from me. Mira shouted as he blasted directly at the wall she was hiding behind, I know your energy far too well, no matter how much you lower it. He roared. Damn. Toa thought as she ran deeper into the lab I have no choice I need to escape now she thought in a panic. Wait, I know where I can hide. She thought as she created a portal he's not ready to fight Mira yet, but if needed my magic can make him stronger. And Mira won't dare come without risking the time patrol being alerted of his presence there. 
I can at least hide out on Earth for a time Toa thought as she had no real options aside from being absorbed or fleeing to Earth. Before she could enter her portal the wall behind her exploded and a chunk of wall slammed into the back of her head and sent her flying into the portal. There you are. No. Mira shouted as he saw Toa fall into the portal and disappear. Damn it. Mira roared angrily I will find you. He shouted. A few weeks later with Naruto. Naruto groaned as he woke up in his room. Ready to greet another day of training. And suddenly as he stood up to get dressed the ceiling exploded into chunks of rubble as a figure fell through it. A beautiful white-haired, blue-skinned woman in a red and black jumpsuit with a hole showing under boob, matching heels, and a white skirt. What the hell? Naruto shouted as Bulma heard the crash and shout and rushed in there. Naruto why is there another woman in your bedroom? Bulma asked with a sweet tone that was anything but sweet. Bulma I swear she just came through my ceiling. He responded in a panic as he stood up from his bed. Before remembering he was completely nude. Then why are you naked? Bulma growled out. I sleep nude. It gets hot at night okay. Naruto exclaimed as he pulled on his pants. Ugh. The woman groaned as she aroused awake due to their fighting. Where am I? Who are you two? She asked in alarm not knowing where she was. You're in Capsule Corporation and you crashed through the roof into my boyfriend's room. Bulma said. Capsule Corporation? That sounds familiar, but I don't know why the woman said as she grabbed the back of her head in pain while trying to remember. Are you okay? Naruto asked her concerned. I don't remember anything the woman said as she held her head. Bulma's glare disappeared at this do you remember anything? A name? A name? I think mine is Toa. I don't recall too well just that name and everything else is fuzzy the woman explained. What if Naruto was strongest dragon warrior in Dragon Ball and thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part comment down and thanks for watching the video and see you guys next video.